Oh, there it goes. Um, yeah, all right. I, uh, here we go. Yay! Hold on, I'm making my tweet. When I awoke the following morning, Cizotoson was already gone. Outside the window. Screen sharing to us. <laughs> out, you are already gone. I'm having you roleplay as Suzato. Oh, I see. It was a joke. Outside the window. No, I just suck. <laughs> Outside the window, the rain came down in sheets. And so began an, a, an even longer day than the last. One that I would remember for the rest of my days. <laughs> Oh. Low Punny looks like my mom, but I'd still fuck it. <laughs> Good morning, Gina. Dots! I'm determined to prove your innocence today. I guess since Susanna's gone, you should probably also be Gina. I'm sure we can do it. So where's your friend, then? I don't know. Sorry? You know, her in the fancy dress. Cesato, how have you seen? <laughs> so <laughs> rude. Said. It's not that hard to say. Cesato, how have you say it? I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry you haven't picked up on that yet, Gina. Ah, oh, Miss Cesato <laughs> had to leave early this morning. She was already gone by the time I woke up. You're all right with that, are you? Forget about me if you like. Go and see her off. It's fine. It's not as though Miss Cesato and I won't meet again one day. Even so. But you, Gina, you only get one chance. This trial keep today. Doing this, are we? <laughs> well, until you stop being the worst, yes, I am. Fair. Probably little, yeah. Yay! Oh, you I'm holding a cat, even though I probably shouldn't have it in a public space. How are you feeling, Jimmy? Did you manage to sleep? This is our new defense assistant! We give her a book and a pretty pink dress, and it's like Susie never left. Iris, what are you doing here? What do you mean? When a friend is in need, we show our support. Isn't that right, Waggy? Oh, goodbye. Uh, Waggy! Great way to show your support, Kitty. You piece of shit! <laughs> Let him have a nose around. What arm can it do? That reminds me. I brought a paper on the way here. Now, would you like the good news or the bad news? Now what do you say, Runo? Ginny? Oh, well, I think I'd rather get the bad news out of the way first. Uh, nah, I'll always take the good news first. You might not live to hear the bad. The Listen, I, I need to make my tweet. I'll literally, like, four clips. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> yes, the question that always gives away people's personalities. Let's not go there. Alright then, I'll give you the bad news first. A record amount of rain has fallen this morning, and carriages all over the capital are struggling to move. Uh, the bad news was a weather report. So I hope that Susie made her train to Dilfer and that the train isn't delayed on its way to the fort. Gosh, yes. Alright then, so what's the good news? Well, the rain is forecast to subside this afternoon. Did someone in chat? All right, so what's the good news? It's an article about the Mets, baby. Love the Mets. <laughs> right out <laughs> of the gate, guys. So, even if the train... I was going to say the bullet train. We're quite advanced here in London. So, even if the train is delayed, it should be able to make up the time later. It's the world's first bullet train. It's very fast because if you complain about the wait times, they shoot you. Oh. Very clever. Well, that is good news, isn't it? I couldn't give a monkeys, really. If only all good news cancelled out the bad. Hey, look! The trial has made the headlines, too. Pawnbroker perishes in pick purse plunder. <laughs> Aggressive popping peas there. Okay. Right. Sib spits right. on his mic. <laughs> How do you like that? Well, let them say what they want. See if I care. I can't, because you're covering your face. Don't worry. Bruno will 
show everyone that this headline is nonsense. I will. And then, in tomorrow's papers, the headlines will be... Discharge Divers Dauntless Do-Gooder. Isn't that right, Green Elf? Uh, um, yes. Let's hope so. Of course they will. I have absolute faith in you. How was that? I was trying to sound like Susie. Did it work? Did it? It's like she was still here. Oh. <laughs> I'm afraid you didn't read the paper. Pray. Oh, wrong one. Good luck then, Runo. Something, something. Oh. Oh, oh I'm dead. Hornbroker perishes and pick purse plunder. How awful. Virginia, I mean. But tomorrow's headline will be Discharge Diver is Dauntless Do Good, eh? right? Yes, something like that. If possible, I'd like to go even bigger. Bigger? How? Proud pickpocket protects planet post trial, perhaps? Protects planet? Oh, I can't wait for tomorrow now. It's going to be so great. Okay. Oh. I'm gonna get my teeth. Dun, dun. I can't turn this around. There's a sensational story lower down the front page as well. Look, Ministry Mole. Classified secrets may have been leaked overseas from Ministry of Justice. For a ten-year-old, Iris certainly has something I couldn't read in time. Oh, and there's no, uh... There's no backplay on these things. Interesting. It's all about secret communications between Great Britain and its allies. It's Appar all about the Mets. <laughs> it's all about the Mets, baby. <laughs> Apparently they've been intercepted by hostile nations. Communications are being intercepted? But how would somebody be doing that? That's the question, isn't it? I've come up with three different possible methods so far. Are you looking for a new career, Runo? No, of course not. I wonder, perhaps something Lord Strongheart said has something to do with this. Yes, it could be, and it could explain why he has Gregsy running from pier to post at the moment. For some reason, that counts as an update. Hmm? Obviously, I don't know the law like Susie does, but still! Die! Oh. I'll, I'll be by your side the whole time, giving you moral support and encouragement. I'm not sure that big thing is as comforting as you think it is, to be honest, but thank you, Iris. That's very kind of you. Oh yeah, Iris. <laughs> yes, Ginny? Well, I was wondering is all about Sholmes. Do they fix him up all right? He's dead. Yes, yes. The operation was a great success. But Hurley still hasn't come around yet. I'm afraid he's going to be in a coma for a plot long period of time. Eh? A coma, or as we call them here in England, a coma. A coma. <laughs> That's a friend of mine at Scotland Yard. Coma Simpson. <laughs> to send a telegram as soon as he wakes up. I'm sure Gregson will let us know the moment there's news. Oh, right. No Suzotto Sean, Sean, and no Mr. Sholmes. It's all down to me today, to prove that Gina is innocent of this crime. Miss Gina Lestrade. No, nah, it could be Will. Will, Will, Will yeah, needs right. what Will can get. Oh, the trial is about to begin. Thank you for this part. That'd be $20. Please make your way into the courtroom. I will pay you in kisses. Yes, let's go, okay. Gina, Iris. Lead the way, Runo. Poor Gina. She's trying to put on a brave face, but I can tell she's worried and scared. I have to believe in here, in here from start to finish. That's the weapon that will. <laughs> that's the weapon that will secure our victory here. If I've learnt anything from my great friend, it's that. Oh, you're behind me. <laughs> hey, Runo's gay. In the, na in the name yeah. of Her Majesty, the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session. This trial shall determine the guilt or innocence of Miss Gina Lestrade. Uh, I now fact. call upon the counsels for the prosecution and defense to declare their willingness to proceed. The prosecution is ready. The defense is ready. 
Lord Van Zeeks? My lord. Remind me, how many years ago was it that you withdrew from the public prosecution service? Hmm. It was some five years ago, my lord. Yes, and then two months ago you resurfaced somewhat unexpectedly. And here you are again today. Are there some circumstances of which the court should be aware that have led to this erratic behavior? I needed to recharge in my coffin. Very good. In what one might describe as your former life five years past, you dealt exclusively in matters concerned with the highest echelons of society and government. Really? Yet today you choose to try a simple case of burglary and murder. I confess I find it more than a little befuddling, Council. Well, I'm just trying things. Tell me if it's bad. Hmm. There are two types of people, a person I can abide. Firstly, those wealthy scoundrels who hide behind a mask of philanthropy to cheat the public at large. He means Mr. McGilded, who you defended against the Reaper two months ago. Thank you for grabbing me this box of oranges to stand on so I can see over the podium. <laughs> I would have preferred some pineapples, just so you know I at least put my chinny chin chin on the desk, but that's all right. Sorry, sorry I didn't have access to a box of pineapples in 19... I know, the import prices are bonkers! <laughs> Something funny about the term bonkers coming out of her. <laughs> yes, I just about managed to work that out. Thank you. Magnus McGilded. If I'd known what a monster he was, I never would have defended him. And secondly, even more loathsome, those wily scoundrels who masquerade as allies only to effect total betrayal in the final hour. In other words, the confidence tricksters from those tiny islands in the Far <laughs> East. The next one near. Here we go! <laughs> what? I just coming did, out swinging. Did he really just say that? Oh, I'm sorry. He, he, uh, excuse me, sir. Could you please stop that? I wish I could. I actually managed to work that out too. Thank you, Iris. Total betrayal. What are you talking about? That torrid, the CEO of racism in the, chat. That torrid look of hatred in Lord Van Zeek's eyes. Was that directed solely at me? Or was he talking about all Japanese people? Sorry, my screen share is fucking up. There we go. An alarmingly scathing... Uh, Jesus Christ, square share screen. An alarmingly scathing explanation, Lord Van Zeek's. Still, the judiciary welcomes the return of the so-called Reaper of the Bailey, feared by old London. You still there? <laughs> oh, his nope. internet pipped out. All right, yeah, that makes sense. Hmm. All right. Your lordship is too kind. Now, jurors, the six of you have been selected at random to represent the will of the people in this trial. Oh my, oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay. Hey, that's oh, wow. the that's the bad oh. guy. Look at his little mouse. Oh, he's got a oh. mouse. Oh, it's fucking Bimpkin Scaramushki! Will! Bimpkin Scaramushki. <laughs> Are you ready to hear the evidence placed before you and determine the guilt or innocence of the defendant? Uh, I'll, I'll take this guy. Former lieutenant in the British Army here, don't you know? Chaps like me were born ready. Clean crockery, clean cutlery, and a clean conscience. His lordship's motto is very appropriate here, I think. Everything will be stereoscopic in the future. Absolutely, absolutely everything. And I'm ready for it. Gamer boy. <laughs> I don't understand it. I can't have left it in there. It's not possible. But could I have? Oh, she's got a telegram. Uh, Will, yeah. you should be the last two. Sure. Women indispensable in society. Stop. Female-centric future awaits. Stop. Suffragette. <laughs> <laughs> Just be Bimkin Skaramushki. Uh, good day. I am visiting London for sightseeing. I would like to take this bus to Crystal Tower, please. Why, why is the Russian on the British jury? <laughs> is something wrong, you know? Uh, not exactly. It's just... I'm fairly certain... I'm fairly sure I recognize these jurors. Almost all of them, in fact. 
It's almost like the game is rigged. Really? Funny coincidences like that do tend to happen from time to time, don't they? But it is quite strange. The jurors are chosen at random. <laughs> from London's six million inhabitants, you know? So I've been led to believe. But something tells me I'm being duped. Very well. Now, Lord Van Zix, the court calls upon the prosecution to introduce the facts of the case. No, thank you. <laughs> you can't mention chat five fucking actors in the BBC. <laughs> As you wish, my lord. Allow me to begin with a word of warning to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury. In short... There has never been a more self-evident case of cold-blooded murder. Uh, B? <laughs> the victim, Mr. Pop Winterbank, proprietor of a pawn shop on Baker Street, was shot from behind and died instantly. The prosecution presents this photographic print of the crime scene. His first name was Pop? Yeah, we knew <laughs> that, dude. I don't remember that. As the court will observe, there was a single bullet wound just below the gentleman's left shoulder. If they said that before, I think I assume they were calling him that as like a, you know, a nickname mm. or a yeah. term of affection. Mm -hmm. The evidence suggests that the bullet pierced the man's heart, resulting in near instant death. Moving on to the findings of Scotland Yard's coroner. His report states that the bullet entered the body on a rising diagonal trajectory. And what's that supposed to mean? It means the victim was likely shot by someone significantly shorter in height than himself. Are you? Someone. Oh my God, are you gonna do this shit again? Someone oh. like the accused, you might say. The prosecution wishes to present the autopsy report and crime scene photograph as evidence, my lord. Oh, Indeed. Okay, the court accepts. Hand them to the bailiff, please. Okay. I'm gonna look at the thing real quick. Mm -hmm. Pop Windebank, pawnbroker on Baker Street, uh, died between 1 and 1.30 a.m., Reporting party was us. Single bullet wound in upper half of victim's back. No other visible signs of trauma. Instant death from post uh, postero anterior bullet wound to the heart. The bullet entered the body from the back on a gently rising diagonal trajectory. Okay. All right, good. I don't have to investigate anything in this one. Uh, right. There's nothing super interesting immediately, to be honest, so. I now ask the court to turn its attention to this plan of the establishment where the incident occurred. The proprietor was found in the storeroom where he kept articles pawned to him. A windowless room with a single point of entry, a door to the main shop, that was locked. In this sealed chamber, there were only two persons present. The victim, Mr. Winterbank, and the accused. It may further interest the court to know that when the accused was discovered at the scene, she had in her hand the gun used to fire the fatal bullet. Oh. That's it, there's nothing more to say. Fuck that bitch. Ruh, 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 ruh. Objection! We can't jump to conclusions here. We mustn't assume her guilt because of what she has to do to survive. <sighs> Little sip. My learned Nipponese friend, it is you who mustn't jump to conclusions. The prosecution has barely begun presenting its case. <laughs> Conveniently, this appalling act of murder did not go unobserved. There were witnesses. Good gracious! After their testimony, this girl's true nature will be exposed. Pitiful pickpurse or cold-hearted killer? 
Here's to the establishing the truth. Catface. Mm. The court will take the floor plan and firearm into evidence. Hand them to the bailiff, please, Lord Van Zeeks. At once, my lord. Here you go. Okay. And this one. gun. <laughs> Bang. Careful. <laughs> Careful, it's loaded. Shoots right past Reno's kid's head. Oopsie doodle. Pray, uh, forgive uh, my, <laughs> pray, forgive my inaccuracy. <laughs> this is Mr. Winderbank's gun. Cylinder's completely empty. Mr. Winderbank, how is you? I'm eating pizza. I'm quite sorry. I'm almost done. <laughs> yes, but it's only ever with a single bullet loaded, I understand. That's right, to keep all pawned articles that were in his care safe. But his one bullet that, uh, but his one bullet was fired that night and the poor man lost his life. Was he protecting his shop, I wonder? Trying to keep the articles safe? Yes. Do not say oopsie doodle so seductively. That's just how my voice do. <laughs> oopsie doodle. Oh my, it appears there was a little fucky wucky. <laughs> <laughs> a little fucko boing. <laughs> Pray, forgive the stinky. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Too far. Please do not ruin my meal. This isn't good. <laughs> hmm. What do you mean, Jello? stop, please? Like, I'm the one who ruined that. I feel like the mood in here has been very gloomy all of a sudden, you know? I think that's because he said stinky. <laughs> <laughs> Let us begin. Bring forth the witnesses to the foul murder of Mr. Pop Winderbank on April 16th of this year. Oh my oh. goodness! Oh. Hello. You're hitting, right? Oh my god! Witnesses, state your names and occupations for the board. My name is Nash. Which one? Who wants what? I love. <laughs> I adore these two. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> I feel like, okay. I feel like why are they holding fruit? <laughs> I really want to hear either Siv or Will as the tiny one. <laughs> hey, Will. Do you want to both be the tiny one? How do what? we both be the tiny one? We've read the same lines at once before. Oh, I don't know if that's a good <laughs> okay. idea, honey. All right, uh, I'm, if I'm Iris and Gina, and then, well, you're also two people. Um, uh, I don't know, man. It's up to you guys. Professional. <laughs> All right. My name, I could be both. My name's Na- For God, what voice haven't I used? All right. I'm a crimesman, am I? Name's Nash Skulkin. Occupation is um baddie. Oh, you're right. Yeah, Will is Gregson, so I'll be I'll be little apple. Oh my baddie. god, you're an apple and a pear, you're right! Professional yeah. baddie! <laughs> His name is Ringo! <laughs> oh, they're the Beatles! <laughs> they're the Beatles! My name's oh. Ringo Skulkin. Occupation's um the same as you. Love it! The Yes, wonderful. Device Gregson, Scotland Yard Inspector. That's right, we we'll, uh, that's right, we we'll what they call <laughs> The Three Skulking three Brothers. Skulking brothers. <laughs> what? Oh, I three? Hate... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what are you looking at me like that for? Don't lock me in with you lot. Cold blimey, that's cold. <laughs> don't you know what we, I don't know how do you, John? How do you do that voice? Don't you know what we're going through? It's our elder brother. Lost contact with him, we have. So we're scouring every shady corner of the capital. And then last night, it's Paul Hollywood. We came across you, the very spit of the bloke. Ain't that right, Ringo? He is, Nash, he is. I'm still finishing this pizza. <laughs> so we decided there and then what we was going to do. We was going to call you. Mm. Big Brother Skulky. Come on, leave it out, you two. Skul Sulky Skulkin. And that's before he's run out of chips. 
Well then, Inspector Sulky Gregson. Begging your pardon, my lord, but the name's Tobias. What I would like to know, Inspector, is what you are doing in the witness stand. The Skulkin brothers are currently under arrest, my lord, on suspicion of theft. Hmm. Thieves, are they? These three? No, my lord, begging your pardon, but please don't let me in with this lot. Two nights ago, these two brothers illegally entered an establishment with intent to burgle. <laughs> and in the course of their nefarious activities, they became embroiled in a far more sinister crime. By Jove, you mean to say, what an extraordinary coincidence! Indeed, my lord. While attempting to burglarize the pawnbrokery, they witnessed his proprietor's murder. <laughs> Oh, look, I've got a cart of oranges as well. Order! Order! The various trespasses of these brothers is not the subject of today's proceedings, though they will naturally face trial in the very near future. <laughs> boxes are really. Brothers inside the box. Boxes are really popular with us lately. <laughs> <laughs> With your lordship's permission, <laughs> I'd like to remain in the stand to keep these <laughs> gents on the straight and narrow. That's us, straight and narrow. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Of course, Inspector. Uh, skeptical, as I, skeptical as I am of the caliber of these witnesses, I will permit them to stake the stand. Mr. and Mr. Skokin, you will now testify before the court. Describe the events of the night in question and what exactly you saw. Happy to. Happy to. Cause a skulkin's never skulkin. skulkin. <laughs> Get it out. <laughs> I love these two. God. Very funny. Here's God, my... this game is so much better than anything I've seen with this this series. This is my humanized Animal Crossing OC. Yeah. <laughs> We was walking down Baker Street in the small hours and the gaff's door and the gaff's door was ajar, see? It was like some kind of sign. Wait, I gotta remember what they sound like. The John Beatles. Lennon. <laughs> the Beatles. <laughs> John it was Lennon. Like some kind of sign. Begging for us to go in it was. I'm but going a little we... bit Scottish. It's, it's really hard. It's, it's 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 the same Liverpool accent Paul Hollywood has, if that helps. Okay. I don't know if but it once does. we got inside, cool blimey lummy, we had a gun shot from the back room. We went to see what was what, but the door was locked from the inside. We oh, never done We never done nothing, Governor. We never took nothing. We just left off of that nice and quiet. Outstanding choices <laughs> voices. Hmm. A terrible coincidence, it would seem. Dude, at the precise moment, oh yeah. Oh, I yeah. Just said something. At the precise moment these miscreants entered the property, an even more sinister crime was afoot. The witness's testimony is consistent with the crime scene in every detail. <laughs> so much. Had, didn't they shoot Sherlock? No, Sherlock isn't in this game. <laughs> <laughs> The door providing access to the storeroom from the main shop was indeed locked from the inside. And within, only the victim and the accused were found. Yeah, but there was a window on that door. And Apple could easily sneak on through. Hmm. I must say, it does appear to be an overwhelmingly simple case. Still, the defense may cross-examine the witnesses now, of course. Counsel, if you please. Counsel? Um, yes. What's the matter, Reno? Sorry, I... I was just stunned into silence for a minute by the blatant lies being told by that pair in the stand. I know it's all nonsense because I saw it with my own eyes. I'll just have to expose that testimony for the pack of lies it is. Hello. God, Hello. They're fucking, Hello. They're just lies. Okay. Door was ajar. That's true. Begging, that's <coughs> unnecessary. Once we got inside, we heard a gunshot. That's not true. The door was locked from the inside. That's not true. 
Okay, that's not true either. Oops, right, I can't click that left button. I think they're lying. No, no, no choice here, really. <clears throat> All right. Uh, let's just press these last three. Kia. A gunshot, you say? Just the one. Are you sure about that? <laughs> yup, just the one, governor. I can swear to that. <laughs> it was now, shoot was. Ain't that right, bro? The firearm used belonged to the victim himself. Yes, Mr. Winterbank always used to leave his gun lying around on the counter. Right, I remember. When we examined it, we found the revolver was completely empty of rounds. That makes sense. Mr. Winderbank always used to say he only ever kept a single bullet loaded. That's true. I remember saying, him saying that as well. So we can say with considerable certainty that only a single round was discharged from the firearm used as the murder weapon. Yes, my lord, we can. And I should remind the court that the firearm in question was discovered in the hand of the accused. Hmm. Wonderful. Do you mean the door between the main shop and the storeroom? If my learned friend is having difficulty grasping the situation, perhaps a drawing might help. Excluding... Over with a crayon. Do -de -do -de -do -de -do. <laughs> I like the red ones. Excluding the shop's entrance from the street, there is only one other door. That of the storeroom. Course there was only a little lamp or woof. A little oil lamp burning. Not much to see, boy. And the door was hidden behind the curtain and all. That's right. When we arrived, the, mo the door was mostly obscured by the curtain. Tell me, why exactly did you try to open that door? Ooh. Any normal petty thief would run at the sound of a gunshot, I would think. I will, um... Your turn to rabbit, Ringo. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Nash, um, yeah, I uh, suppose you have to say, fuck, what is the accent? <laughs> you don't have to say we ain't normal. John Lennon, John it's, Lennon. It's the vocal it's equivalent so... of, like, taking a soup ladle and dunking it into soup. <laughs> oh, guys, <I> see. <laughs> I suppose you'd have to say we ain't normal, eh? There we go, I found it again. <laughs> Broadly speaking, Humans respond in one of two ways on hearing a gunshot or scream. The timid flee, gripped by fear, or the courageous investigate to see if they might help. What about the third kind of person, which is me, who just adds to the violence and starts killing? <laughs> and the fourth kind of person who gets shot. <laughs> and the silver spoon. These gentlemen are the latter inclination. My lord and Nipponese friend, it would seem, is of the former. All right, somehow I just proved that I was a coward that night. Great. Good. Yeah, great. Thank you, councils. Wow, so, catchy bitches tonight. <laughs> I believe we all understand that the door was locked and could not be opened. Proceed, witnesses. Somebody pointed out that we forgot to do ats in the Discord, so I'm just going to plonk those in real quick. Ooh, we never done nothing, governor. We never took nothing. We just left Ooh. that to that nice and quiet. Ooh. Morning. Morning. You didn't do or take anything. Is that your story? Well, it was Bildum soon as, wasn't it? It was no shit was. It was no shit was. Didn't even have time to pull me dukes out me Lucy Lockets. Just, what? So what the fuck are they saying? <laughs> so with, They're saying a lot. So with no time to take your hands out of your pockets, you just left nice and quietly, you say. I saw it, governor. Not for we ain't more violence. Peace-loving nibblers, we are not bludgers. <laughs> we are, Nash, we are. Never even pulled me dicks out, me lucky lockets. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you'd clearly like us to believe. Oh, huh? come again. As you fled from the pawnbrokers that night, did you not run into anyone else? <laughs> and did you not fire a gun at that person? <laughs> Saints alive! They fired a gun, you say? Ooh! <laughs> Blimey, governor! 
We're a fucking joke, we are. <laughs> you ain't telling us it was you in that doorway. Well, thanks for good. <laughs> thanks, buddy. Yeah. Wow. It was. <laughs> Why the bleeding Nora? Didn't you mention that before? You were armed with a gun, and it was you who fled. Uh, and as you fled the scene, you fired that gun at London's greatest detective, Herlock Sholmes. Well, I'm not sure I'd say greatest detective. Mm. They shot it to go. Wait, me, me, me. What did he even? What did he even? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's be on the pale. On the night in question. This pair were arrested by the police within minutes of the discovery of the crime scene. Their suspicious countenance rapidly <laughs> gave them away. <laughs> <Got it. laughs> and when searched, a firearm was indeed found in their possession. Oh. Huh. Furthermore, the barrel shows signs of a shot having been fired from it. Oh. <laughs> The prosecution invites his lordship to examine the firearm recovered from these brothers. Ooh, that is a that is like an old timey gun. Oh yeah. Yes, indeed. Remnants of powder around the muzzle, as you say, counsel. Ooh. Russian. The court will hold this weapon as evidence. Okay, let's take a look at that. Wait until I finish my sip. Ooh. No. I didn't mean to skip that. That's fine. I was probably being racist. Whoa. That's like a blunder, not blunderbuss, a flintlock almost. It's just a, a longer revolver. Mm. So there's ammunition <coughs> still loaded in five of this revolver's six cylinders. Yes, which tells us uh, that only a single shot has been fired from it. So I assume what we're going to have to prove is which gun shot the calendar on the wall and which gun shot the guy. Exactly. The bullet that hit Hurley, in fact, isn't it? Yes. It happened almost as soon as we'd walked in through Winterbank's door. Oof. I'll make those brothers pay. But there's still the... Hmm. Oh, yeah, I, I guess. I guess the one that shot Hurley was probably uh, the one in the wall behind him, covered in blood. Yeah. But you never know. Yes... Here's to you successfully presenting the evidence. Huh? Wow. For yes, there are the telltale signs of spent powder on this gun and a single bullet missing from the cylinder. But the prosecution demands evidence that it was fired at the scene of the crime under scrutiny in this trial. Don't, don't. Objection. Well, I don't need evidence because I was there. Objection. However, the rest of us in this courtroom were not. If the defense fails to provide evidence in support of its rash claim, we shall have no choice but to toast your incompetence and move on. Evidence that these two fired that gun before they left Winderbanks last night. Okay. The court demands that all claims are affirmed with clear proof. What evidence shows that these witnesses unloaded a firearm in the pawnbroker's shop that night? Um, do we have a picture of the calendar? I don't think oh, we do. Oh, you know what? Maybe, maybe it was actually the, the uh, bloods. it was, it was, it was Ringo who shot him because he's so fucking short. Yeah. But, like, um, the angle. It's, it's this, right? Yeah. That's what I would assume. Yeah. I, I think it's this. Yeah, because it, it is a, 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 a picture. Yeah, definitely say. Yeah, of the date, so. Well, it's just that there is a, a second bullet mark in, in this situation. It's, this is so obvious that I'm like almost worried this is the wrong thing, but. The evidence is in this portfolio. What? What on earth have you there, counsel? During the course of our investigations, we discovered a number of blood stains. Not trusting the police to do the job they're trained to do. How arrogantly you. Well, anyway, ignoring you. to leave race out of this. We analyzed the blood. We analyzed all the blood samples we found and recorded these results in this portfolio. And you claim to have the evidence the court is demanding therein? Yes, my lord. No more dallying, then, counsel. 
present pertinent information. What do you have in your portfolio that proves these witnesses unloaded a firearm at the scene? Oh, oh, that this one. is my cover letter. Am I? It's this one, right? Am I? I mean, yeah. I'll look at the others, but it's not that. It's not that. No. Yeah, no. Okay. Yes, it's just that. <coughs> what is that? Explain. It's a photographic it's print from a butt. <laughs> Come on, man. At, at Winderbank's pawnbrokery on the day of the incident. I guess it is green. From the scene of the crime, is it? Is, is that a bullet hole? And if my eyes do not deceive me, it appears the bullet is still lodged there. Yes, you are, as your lordship noticed. Whoa, all right, that just zoomed fucking by. Hang on. Uh, the bullet pierced Mr. Winderbrank's calendar. The date shown being the, si lung. being the 16th of April, the very day of the pawnbroker's death. The incident occurred at one hour after midnight, but the... It's a separate shot had been fired sometime after the calendar had been set to the 16th. That's right. And while it isn't irrefutable, the defense believes this is credible evidence that the witnesses did fire around from their gun in the pawnbrokers that night. I love these fucking cartoon bandits. Order! How does the prosecution stand, Lord Van Zeeks? On very tippy toes. Wouldn't that be so funny if he was just like, Shit, I didn't have time to look at the crime scene. If that is the direction my learned friend wishes to take, the prosecution has no objection. What? <coughs> but you'll forgive me for flinging my hallowed chalice aside in disgust at the repugnancy it exposes. Yes. On the night in question, these brothers entered the pawnbrokery illegally. And like the bold baddies they claim to be, <laughs> opened fire on the new arrivals before fleeing back onto the street. Ooh. Baddie of the day? <laughs> take, it, take it easy there, Governor. You're gonna land us in the soup. We had a deal. You weren't gonna land in the to Tell him, Silky Tet, set the bloke straight. Uh, That's what their am, faces are. I have nothing to add. So he knew, did he? Van Zeeks knew their testimony would almost certainly expose the extent of their crimes. It would seem now that I owe my learned Nipponese friend a word of gratitude. What do you mean? This is going somewhere racist, isn't it? What I mean is that you have helpfully confirmed an important fact. To what fact do you refer, Lord Van Zeeks? Paper. As has been established at the point of their arrest, a single shot had been fired from the brother's gun. However, if their shot found its target in Mr. Holmes, then clearly these witnesses cannot be accused of the fatal shooting at the proprietor and victim. <laughs> in other words, these two men have no material connection to the murder of Mr. Winterbank at all. So that's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. We didn't have nothing to do with it. We didn't, Ash. We didn't. That's what I reckon. Your crimes include unlawful entry, intent to steal, perjury, and let us not forget, attempted murder. Quite a catalog, eh, fellas? <laughs> We're in for it now, bro. Now then. Let us take a moment to consider the aforementioned great detective, Mr. Olock Sholmes. It would seem the man patronized the brown brokers in question somewhat regularly. Where's he going with this? Oops, sorry. Eccentric. Set who? Mr. Sholmes appears to take pleasure in tinkering with eccentric machinery. I'll kill not, you. Not me. Don't, don't give me that look. Don't you look at me with them big old eyes. <laughs> oh, God damn it. Sorry. Yeah. He installed a pair of machines like this one in the victim's shop. That's one of Hurley's red-handed recorders. What is that, Council? It has the appearance of a photographic contraption. As your lordship has surmised, it is indeed a camera attached to a small timing device. 
Someone calling it now Egbert is their lost brother. I'd love that, honestly. What How fucking the fun. Fuck? They are all food themed. Every half yeah, an hour. It's gotta be a fruit, right? It's gotta be like, I don't know. Eggs are fruit. <laughs> Eggs, eggplant. <laughs> it automatically photographs the interior of the establishment. The idea being that if a thief were to break into the shop, he would be caught red handed. Hmm. The prosecution has obtained the photographs taken by the device <laughs> on a comedy. night in question. Yeah. Fruit are eggs, actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. As the court will observe, copious identical prints are produced in a quite desultory dis fashion. <laughs> I've never seen that word in my life. Hmm. Rather prodigal, I feel. In fact, there are two such devices in the victim's shop, my lord. If I may refer the court to the plan of the premises, their respectively pos their respective positions are here and here. You say these cameras produce a print every half hour. I'm afraid I fail to see how that would help if the anticipated thief conducted his activities in one of the many 30-minute intervals. One can only pray that the would-be criminal lingers, my lord. Hmm. On the night in question, the witnesses currently in the stand were not caught on camera. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's a bit of fire talk, guy, eh, bruv? <laughs> Lady Luck loves his skulking. Witnesses, at what time did your trespassing begin? Uh, must have been just after one, right, bruv? Mm, must have been there, she must have been. Yeah, just gone one. In which case, minutes before these brothers entered the establishment, what scene might we expect to see within the shop? Let us examine the evidence. That's not great. Uh -oh. Good lord! It's, it's the defendant! Miss Gina Lestrade! Ah, fuck. As the court can clearly see. Uh -oh. The accused is pictured, gun in hand, facing the victim over the shop counter. No doubt coercing the proprietor to open the door to his storeroom. That's probably accurate. Quite. One can only too easily imagine the offense that unfolded. The court will take this photographic print as evidence, if you please, counsel. It's not great. It's not great. Uh, I don't believe it, Jenny. Oh, good. <laughs> okay. Uh, there's no blood on the paper at that time. Nope. Photograph of the cat is still there. Okay. Hmm. Uh, wait, does it have to do with which gun it is? Could you tell? Yeah, it's it, the, it is. It it's is the gun gotcha. she's accused of firing. Gotcha. <coughs> In short, the accused is the only person who could possibly have killed Mr. Winterbank. Someone in chat, why is there a hole in the skull, though? Skulls are supposed to have holes in them. That's how we see. <laughs> oh! Bang. He killed him. Oh, I say, my lord. Probably. Oh, I say, my oh. lord. Wonder if I might put in a word at this point. Go ahead, Mr. Foreman. Took a bally bullet to the knee in the Battle of Maiwan, 1880, don't you know? Decorated for it and all that, but forced to retire from service, sadly. Crawls from metal can never outshine the exploits of chaps like us on the battlefield. Yes, Mr. Foreman, and. What exactly is your point? Carried on the battle after a time, don't you see? The battle of daily life, if you like. And here I am now, leading this small squadron, six men, all good and true. And we'll all go down together, you mark my words. One for all, and all for one. What the fuck is he talking about? <laughs> the ladies and gentlemen of the jury have reached agreement, have they? Is that what we are to understand? Well, Mr. Foreman, is that correct? 
In a matter of speaking, yes. That is the Garadam Squadron's position, sir. What? No, it's too soon to make a judgment yet. Status report for the court men on the double. His lordship insists on promptitude at all times, and that goes for making decisions, too. I think you'll find the truth is clear as day now. Oh, I could reach out and touch it. Oh, he's <laughs> using stereoscopes. I thought he was yes. just crazy. <laughs> I wouldn't have left it in there. I just wouldn't. But in all honesty, I can't actually remember. Oh no, he was the doctor operating on Sherlock, oh. wasn't he? Oh my oh. god. Situation clear. Stop. No room for doubt. Stop. Truth now undeniable. Stop. I am very sorry for brothers. They are unlucky. The mouse. Very well. I now call upon each member of the jury to state his or her leaning in this matter. Announce your considered verdicts to the court. Guilty! Guilty. Guilty. What's your normal voice? Guilty! Enough. Guilty! Guilty! Oh, <laughs> guilty! Uh-oh. It does indeed appear that the jury is unanimous in its leaning already. That's honestly fair this time around, I think. Yeah, no kidding. That photograph, it must be the definitive evidence, the definitive evidence that Gregson mentioned. But Jimmy didn't shoot him. No, of course not. My lord, the defense wishes to assert its right to a summation examination. Very well, the court grants permission. So, you refuse to admit defeat again. How unsurprising. We shall proceed immediately with the summation examination. Mr. Foreman, are all members of the jury ready? Absolutely, sir. Always ready for action, my chaps. Very good. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will each explain on what grounds you have determined the defendants to be guilty. I'm gonna order some food real quick. Judicial. Guilty of being Pardon. hungry. I'm going to yep. put my dishes away while he does that. Yep. I'll stay with chat. I'm, I'm still here. It's just... Uh... Oh. <clears throat> I'll stay with chat. Banana, nana. Banana. Oh, yeah. Banana. 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 Nana, nana, nana. I'm crying. Hint some will. What is... What soft drinks does this place have? Mm. Does it have 1891? The no. best drink ever that I cannot find? No. Or That's a year, silly. Not a drink. Yeah. Well, I've been binging Ebon Ward North and loving it. You're a really good DM. Thank you. Well, that's the old stuff. That's that's like three or four years old. Oh, don't. That's don't, almost don't say eight. That. <laughs> yeah. All the evidence clearly points a finger of guilt at this young pickpocket chin. Housemaid, <laughs> 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 I should like to see all filthy eyesores promptly and rigorously eliminated. Oh, I think you'll find that if you look at that photograph in stereo, the truth will just pop out. <laughs> Before you've left it in there, I should think there'll be repercussions by now. <laughs> Mind made up. Stop. Global radio transmission of verdict to follow. Stop. In other land, we say never judge by clothes, judge by head. I am convinced brothers are innocent. Isn't that right, Beepkin Skaramushki? Hmm. The circumstances of the crime and the evidence do indeed implicate the defendant rather comprehensively. The storeroom, locked from inside, in which the victim and the accused were discovered alone. And in the accused's hand, the fatal revolver, the firing of which was heard by these witnesses. Not to mention this print. I really love this guy's voice, actually. Take it from a chap who'd seen action on the battlefield. That young girl is on the verge of pulling the ballot trigger. Thanks a lot, Mr. Sholmes. Oh dear, Harry's cameras were supposed to help, not hinder. I'm afraid I think you have an uphill struggle ahead of you. 
But China didn't shoot Mr. Winterbank. Which means there's more to this situation that we've yet to see. Agreed. You have the floor, Council. Proceed with your the summation examination. I'm sure we can do a, a, a stereoscope of... Because there's two cameras to get some detail. Oh. Yeah, at some point. Um, okay. Yeah, the only the only two that... Uh, I'm mostly interested in this guy who is just not <laughs> paying attention. <laughs> um, what exactly have you been muttering about all this time, sir? You keep talking about having left something somewhere or something like that. Oh, uh, so sorry. As you can probably tell, I'm a surgeon. A surgeon? You totally passed me by. Of course, people conducting a surgery in this country aren't considered to be doctors, oh no. Even though me and my kind are at the forefront of medical science, the real brains in the field. Isn't it insane that in, like, the Middle Ages in Europe, surgeries were conducted by barbers? Yeah, crazy. Uh. Yeah? So... What is it that you think you've left behind? Uh, well, that's a little embarrassing, to be honest. You see, I was operating on someone yesterday. Standard thing, went in through the abdomen. But when I'd finished the procedure, I, oh! I couldn't find my scalpel anywhere. Oh, um, what? Did he? Surely not. Exactly, surely not. You say it to yourself, don't you? Worrying, isn't it? That's what's been troubling me this whole time. Could I really have left my scalpel inside the fella's belly? No, of course I didn't. Oh. Um. So, there you have it. Like I said, a little embarrassing, really. That's one way of putting it. The other is manslaughter. <laughs> That's exactly my concern. And see, this case appears to be all but sewn up. I need to focus on trying to remember exactly what I've been sewn up in elsewhere. Now, I'm sure I made everything back as it should be. Well, as sure as you can be without being sure. I'm sure you need to be more sure. Yikes. That's so much... W I thought he was, like, gonna say, I left the bullet in there. <laughs> Alright, let's talk to this guy. Hey, Muffin Head, what do you think? What do you mean, look at the photograph in stereo? Sorry, what? D don't you know? If you look at the photographic print normally, it looks as though the pocket pocket girl's about to shoot the victim, obviously. But there's no indication that the defendant ever fired the gun. All I'm saying is that if you look at the same print in stereo, it could reveal all sorts of new information. By like any chance, <laughs> are you a fan of stereoscopes? Oh, how did you know? <laughs> Let's go. Call it a lucky guess. Never gets old. Seeing the two prints merge into one before your eyes. It's extraordinary. It's captivating. It's the height of modernity. Of course. Oh, yes, I think you'll find that the stereoscope is here to stay. Giving us new perspectives we could only dream of before. It's the greatest invention the world has ever seen. If only it could give, If only it could give me a new perspective on this case, I might agree with you. This voice sounds like it's going to tell me all about this new way too sugary cereal. Oh, right. <laughs> you never tried teeth crunchums. <laughs> Come in new flavors like denture. <laughs> Thompson's teeth. The only teeth strong enough to eat other teeth. <laughs> Awful crunch noise. Okay. All right, let's talk to you. Please tell me you're not villain Borgia. <laughs> <laughs> the Russian revolutionary. Revolutionary? Da, mm -hmm. ah, I believe there is such a rumor. It's just a rumor? As you see, I have unfortunate appearance. I look like vicious criminal. Your words, not mine. Just want to point that out. People call me revolutionary, murderer, autocrat. And which glove fits? Good day. <laughs> I am visiting London for sightseeing. I would like to take a bus to Crystal Tower, please. <laughs> right. 
That didn't sound staged at all. You'll forgive me for having my doubts. Do it treated like vicious criminal all the time. It is very painful. People do not realize. So I have much sympathies for these brothers. People say they are criminals only because of how they look. The Skulkin brothers? Da. Maybe they went inside Pondbroker's shop. But they have done nothing wrong. That is all I that is what I want to say. The Skulkin brothers did nothing wrong that night. Alright, well first of all, that's one not so little misunderstanding I need to clear up straight away. Tell me something, Iris. What is it, Rena? The jurors are chosen at random from the inhabitants of London Town, aren't they? Yes, it's amazing, isn't it? In that case, how is it that there's a Russian tourist sitting among them who looks <laughs> for, for all the world like a revolutionary? I wish I knew. <laughs> if I can't change the minds of more than half of these six jurors, the trial will be over. Let's say it's skinny knees. Okay, I think we need to... Okay, uh, I'm gonna keep pressing a little while longer. I think we might need to do something with Bolshevik. Um, you're Mr. Natsume's landlord, Mr. Garadib, aren't you? We really must stop meeting like this. Mm. Oh, you're that lawyer chap! Well, there's a turn up for the books. Yes, it's a rather turbulent time we had back then. Some extraordinary events took place at your house, that's for sure. Luckily, Mr. Sholmes and I were there to get to the bottom of it all. I think we did rather a lot for you, didn't we? Mm. I mean, obviously, I wouldn't be suggesting that therefore you should change your leaning to not guilty or anything. Mm. <laughs> Haven't been denied, I suppose. The curse of the Garadib house was the talk of the town out of that business. Lodgers moved out and I couldn't get a bally soul to take up the tenancies. Oh, <laughs> hadn't had the heart to break <laughs> the news to Jonah yet. Bad enough the old girl's clapped up. Yes, can't be denied. You did do rather a lot. But not for us, that's for dashed certain. I suppose not. <laughs> of course. <laughs> there can be no suggestion of that in the reason I am leaning toward not guilty here, obviously. Obviously. But honestly, I really wish you'd pay more attention to the trial and less to juror number two. Oh. Don't like that. I feel like it's probably less sexual and more, God, I wish I had an actual maid and I was rich. That's true. Yeah. I'll, I'll give, this guy's all right. I'll give him credit where he's due. <laughs> Wait a second, sorry. Exchanging tear. I've got like a, got like a weird pain in my lower back today. Um, I keep having to swap chairs. Polishing oh. the bench, I see. Again. A maid's work is never done. Not a blemish must remain. Um. What do you mean by filthy eyesores? On my way to market for his lordship, I have to pass through the O. Oh, the East End. This place is full of beggars, pickpurses, and crossmen. The scum of the earth. A little harsh, perhaps? Oops, sorry. Let me be plain. If it were up to me, all those back slums would be made spit and span or eradicated. Have you... <laughs> have you ever heard of a little concept called eugenics? <laughs> <laughs> At least we have people like the great detective working to achieve these important goals. You're referring to Mr. Herlock Sholmes? That's right. I like to keep abreast of his exploits by reading Rance magazine between my duties. He does wonders cleaning up London streets. In my opinion, he should be declared an honorary maid of the capital. Mr. Sholmes, a maid. It's really quite unforgivable. Got a scum having the audacity to shoot her very greatest detective. Minor detail, it was the two brothers in the stand who shot Mr. Sholmes, not the defendant. A minor detail indeed. They're all got a scum as far as I'm concerned. Well, might just be an idea to get our facts straight anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yes, all right. I shall amend my statement. Okay. Oh. Brothers are the scum Whoa. of the earth. They should swing for shooting the great detective. God yes. damn! <laughs> what oh, the f hey. oh, oh. I agree with you on one thing. The shooting of Mr. Sholmes was an unforgivable act. But the purpose of this trial is to determine who shot the pawnbroker, Mr. Winderbank. 
I'm afraid you're splitting hairs, sir. Much like their skulls should be split. Mm, in twain. Whether it was the thieves or the pick purse, it was still gutter trash that shot the pawnbroker in the end. Filth that should be cleaned up and eradicated, in my considerate opinion. Are you a JRPG villain? What is yes. it? Thanks so much for sharing. Changing this maid's mind isn't going to be easy. You know, she's saying lots of scary things. It was one of those two brothers that shot Hurley, wasn't it? Yes, without question. Well then, I'll never forgive them! Oh, Iris. Perhaps we can use this maid's statement to Oh, help oh, I can put this think? against... I can put this against the, uh, Russian. Because he's like, they do nothing wrong. They are good men. Yep. Objection. Objection. Why don't you two argue with each oh, other? Nice. Those two statements clearly contradict each other. Good lord. Counsel, please explain yourself. No, my, my statement. Contradictory. Contradict. Con uh. Jero number six. You've got the wrong end of the stick. <laughs> I do not have stick. I have mouse. <laughs> <laughs> really charming. <laughs> As Jero number two said earlier, when the Skulkin brothers fled the scene on the night in question, they fired a shot from their revolver. Yes, they shot poor Mr. Sholmes in the abdomen. I understand. Surely you're not going to tell the court now that you didn't hear. Abdomen, abdomen, abidi. Sir? Sorry, sorry. My English is still learning. You are telling the court you didn't hear? Forgive me, I did not hear. Uh, the mouse is reading ah. the book, you're right! Yeah, he is! Ah, ah, here's word. Abdomen, part of person's body containing stomach and other vital organs. It's actually, the, the W is just woo. It is just regular woo. Woo. Yeah. If this is what you mean, you should say in plain English, I am Russian, not a native speaker. Who thought it was a good idea to let this man be on the jury again? So, you are telling me these brothers who look like criminals were lying. They said before, we never done nothing, but truth <laughs> is they shot a detective. Da, this is double negative. Yes, that's exactly right. Oh no! Lying no! is wrong, especially when lie is said by person who look like criminal. Coming from you, that seems surprisingly prejudiced. This means when they said we never took nothing, maybe it was also big fat lie. Is this true? Well, according to the police report, no stolen goods were found, so... No! Enough! I trust no one now. It, it's not the mouse's fault though, sir. I must see with own eyes. I must invest in investigate. Is that what we're doing now? It's just you. It's you were pretty much doing it right. Uh, Russian and some East European languages don't differentiate W and V. It's like um, oh, thank you. I'm very good. Like it's it's like literally the Volkswagen logo. It's both letters at the same time. Just don't think about it that mm. much. Oh, okay. Yes, it is you know easily. Sorry. With the prints from Hurley's red-handed recorder. Ah. Oh. If you compare the print that pictures Jimmy and the next print from half an hour later, you'll be able to see straight away if anything was taken or not. Cooey, Mr. Prosecutor! Oh, tut tut. Calling on the prosecution in the middle of a summation examination of old times. The print showing the accused threatening the victim after she broke into the shop is this one. Following this, the victim and the accused moved into the storeroom. Meanwhile, the Skulkin brothers entered the shop and summarily heard the fatal gunshot ring out. Sadly, none of these events were captured on film. This is the print produced by the camera half an hour later, after the brothers' fight flight. Moving something. So, um, this... No, oh, this yeah. is me! I'm possessed! <laughs> so this was taken after Holy was shot then. As far as I can tell, 
Hmm. Nothing oh. has been taken. Oh, it's slightly jimmied. <laughs> jimmied? That does seem to be the case. I can't notice anything that's obviously missing in the second print. So, the brothers who look like criminals told only one lie. They shot men, but they stole nothing. It would seem so, yes. Good. No, not good. You were right. I did not understand the situation. Now I know brothers will have lied. I think it is very important to continue with trial. Alright, that's pretty reasonable of you. <laughs> Yay! Well done, Runo! The balance is shifting! Well, it's a start, I suppose. But there must be more in what these jurors are saying that I can use to expose the truth. I really like this mechanic. And if I can do that, we might we just might turn the situation to our favor still. Thank you, Council. Continue with the summation examination. And kindly hand the new photographic print to the bailiff to be filed as evidence. Okay, how do I how do I Yeah. Another print in the court record. Wonder if we can make use of that. Yeah, I just don't know how. Um, maybe if I examine it in the court record, it'll like show both at once or something. Mouse. Because they're definitely different. Because the yeah, can I see the second one? I can't f flip them rapidly, but the uh, the everything behind the golden scales moves a little bit. Okay. Yeah, I wish I could have them both on screen at once, but here, you know what? Let me take a screen cap. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure they'll let us do it in a second. Okay, so ignore this guy. Yeah, now, I think now we need to press this guy since we've got both of the photographs. Ah, yeah. Ooh. By any chance, are you first? Okay, no. This is... Bang. Hmm. Yeah, it's definitely, it's gotta be the photograph guy. Um. Do I have to press five? Yeah, I guess I haven't pressed five yet. Maybe there's something there. I love that she's changed to a... Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, radio <clears throat> transmission, what do you mean? Are you from the Far East? Stop. <laughs> Everyone will voices! <laughs> um, yes, from the Empire of Japan. All communication with Far Eastern nations used to take place by mail. Royal Mail, Royal Mail steamers, but Royal Mail steamers take more than a month to complete their journey. Yeah, it's a type of boat. Oh, duh, okay. Huh, but now we have the electric telegram, so we can send messages using electrical signals. Thousands of miles of cables have been laid along the ocean beds. Pretty fucking crazy, honestly. Yeah, Connecting it's, the entire world. I, it's like insane to me that just like dropping a cable along the bottom of the ocean worked. Like you would yeah. think that wouldn't work, right? Yeah, yeah. Thousands of miles of cable on the ocean bed. Makes my head hurt just thinking about it. You are well informed, young lady. <laughs> <laughs> But cables will soon become a thing of the past. Stop. And just when I start catching up. Radio transmission is the future. Stop. <laughs> Messages carried over airwaves to four corners of the globe. Stop. Excitement growing. Stop. Atmosphere electric. Stop. She's having visions. <laughs> right. Try not to wear out your fingers. Air of wireless <laughs> driving technology. Stop. <laughs> And people say inventions like the stereoscope are the height of technology. What utter piffle. Oh my god. Are we yeah. really going to have the fight over technology? Oh my oh, god. Oh shit, no. Crap. I wanted to move to the left by clicking right space, but um, mm -hmm. I, I gotta I gotta cycle back through this. Oh, but there's history. No, I needed to uh, investigate one of the other people on the stand at a specific moment. Oh, I see. Yeah. Hi, Ellie Card. Big stretch. Wow. Wow. Hmm. 
I can't understand it. I really can't. <laughs> oh, he mad. He's mad. They're just silly toys. Excuse me. Excuse me. You're kind of mad. You little peeve. Little uh, peeve boy. <laughs> Would you hit me? Would you kiss me? <laughs> <laughs> Jira number three, sorry to interrupt when you're obviously fuming, but what? <laughs> Do you perhaps have something to say about Jira number five's last remark? <laughs> yeah, re you, know, <laughs> you know what you do, as if I couldn't guess. Oh, you bet I do. Say that again. Go on, I dare you. I love this guy's nose. <laughs> Goodness, are you talking to me? I think he just might be, yes. <laughs> you think stereoscopes are just toys, do you? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, really? A machine to view photographs in three dimensions? Why on earth would you not just use your eyes to look at the world around you? It's all three-dimensional. What a great way to appease the man. No, I'm sorry. Stereoscopes are of no practical use at all. You just don't know! This lady said touch Pardon? grass. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll find that viewing a photograph through a stereoscope can unlock all sorts of possibilities that I'm obviously going to have to demonstrate. <laughs> <laughs> Getting a lot of serotonin from how much I'm making Will laugh tonight. <laughs> I, I just love how fucking unhinged this man is. <laughs> Someone, juror number three with some NFT stan energy. <laughs> Gross! What sort of possibilities? Well, I remember seeing Luki blowing a joint in three dimensions! Take a crime scene, for example. If you had a power of photographs from a crime scene that you could view through a stereoscope, it could reveal hidden clues you'd never noticed before. What? <laughs> How about this print here? It should do the trick, I think. We got this one. Take that. And all right then, Jira number three. I love that like this doesn't matter, and like Van Zeke's just sitting here. He's just and... sitting there with his hands on his forehead, like. <sighs> Are you saying you can do this with any two suitable photographic prints? Of course I can. Very well so... then. Here's a comment in chat, which I misunderstood. So they said, if I overlay two monkeys, they double in value. But I took that as the two jurors calling them monkeys to make them valuable. <laughs> All right. These two prints were both taken with the same camera in Windebanks on the night in question. Yes, I see. Uh, tell me, Mr. Um, uh, lawyer, do you know how stereographic images work? Do you understand the principle? And if... <laughs> NFTs are good for the environment, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think so. I did only have a lesson yesterday. Yeah, I remember. Meow. <laughs> yes, exactly. This guy looks like, um... Oh my god, what's his fucking name? Uh, blonde actor. He was, a. Uh, his name's like Wash or Ward and Firefly. Uh, he's he voiced the. Oh, he, I I think I know what you're talking about. He's oh, in no, a lot of that's... Disney movies. Um, he plays Lord Wizzleton in Frozen. Uh, Chris Pratt, shut the fuck up. Um, <laughs> no. Uh, God, what's his name? Stop saying Chris. You know what? He Alan Tudor. Like, Tudor. Tudor. I say Alan this, Tudor. I say yeah. this. I say this entirely lovingly. He looks like a blonder Wyatt. Yeah, a little bit. Wyatt's got a different jaw. Um, yes, exactly. Also, I don't really want to compare Wyatt to Aww. anyone I'm doing this voice to. That's fair. <laughs> it's, uh, right, that is, it's that small shit between certain <laughs> objects. It's that small shift between certain objects in the two pictures that's really important. So what happens if you use two photographs that are exactly the same, then? No, no, obviously that wouldn't work at all. Not for seeing the scene three-dimensionally, anyway. Oh. oh, of course, now I see. Oh, I think the young girl has discovered the secret. They have, they have. <laughs> Can you uncross your eyes before you tell me? 
look at these two pictures from Hurley's camera, Runa. Go on. Oh God, are you really? I mean. Hold on, I got gotcha. you. Of course, no people. Yeah. I'll give it a go. So to start with, if you had to cross your. That's really tricky. Give me... I'll give it a shot. I just don't think I've got the right distance from my thing. I can't do it because of my eyes. I I can't do it because like I can see the two pictures in both of my eyes at the same time. It's not like the yeah. pictures are separate enough. They, yeah. There needs to be black space in the middle. Uh, yeah, literally the entire section of everything past the uh, past the big ledger yeah. is moved slightly. Like more I, to I the can side. see that just from looking at it, but yeah. So I guess maybe it was shoved, is the idea. Yeah, I saw it. Arg! What, what's going on with these two pictures? Oh, good, okay, it just does it. Some things on the counter sort of, they sort of jump out at you. <laughs> yes, 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 that's it, you see? That's the other amazing power of stereoscopes. Other amazing power? Is someone going to explain this? Black magic? Uh, why the deuce do some of the things on the counter seem to jump out at you like that, hmm? I think you'll find that if you consider the basic principle of the stereoscope, you'll answer your own question. Basic principle of the stereoscope? As I said before, madam, <laughs> let me explain. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> fucking guy. If you try to look at two identical pictures using a stereoscope, it won't work at all. It's the slight shift in the positions I skipped that. In other words, even though at first glance the objects on the counter haven't moved at all between the two pictures, this shows that actually there must have been a slight shift in their positions. Yes, there must have been. Okay, so what? Now, hold fire there, sir! I've got a, reason, got a reasonable grasp of this whole cross-eyed business now, I'd say. But why the devil does this shift between the two prints exist in the first place? Well, what's the answer, fellow? Come on, you're the cross-eyed master. What, me? I haven't the first idea. You know, Runo, it's quite simple. It is. Think. Think it through step by step. The first photograph was taken at 1 a.m. Then, 30 minutes later, a second photograph is taken. The position of some items on the counter appears to have shifted slightly in the interim. So that means... That means that sometime in the half hour interval, someone must have tempered with the things on the counter. Zookers! Is that a slap? <laughs> someone tempered? New information! Stop! Not mentioned in testimony so far! Stop! Yes, I love your read for this character. <laughs> <laughs> We've had to go round in circles a little there, it seems. Uh, but I'm starting to see what I should be aiming at in the summation examination now. Ladies and gentlemen, the question is now clear. We know the items on the countertop were moved, but by whom? Are you, are you suggesting you might know? Of course. I can tell you right now who is responsible for the almost imperceptible shift in items on the counter. Uh, well... <laughs> I just love their artwork so much! <laughs> Oh my god, he claims to be a professional buddy. How old is uh, Zeke? He's 32. Okay. Okay. I was just curious. I was like, how old is he? I guy? like that Ringo is older. Aw, oh, that is funny. It is Mario and Luigi. Professional buddy. <laughs> uh, someone moved it. I'm Honestly, it could have been anybody, but... um. Who do we who do we want to claim? Probably one of these. Strong guys. heart. That would be a poll. Probably one of these guys, right? Yeah, I would say one yeah. of those guys. Or maybe Gina. I don't want to say Gina did it because that seems more suspicious. But yeah, that wouldn't. She might have nudged us. it. Do we have the cat? No, we don't. Oh, damn it. I I think it's one of these guys. Okay. Let me. Yeah, I bet it was a small guy because he's short and he tried to get up on the counter or some shit. I, I think either of them would work. I, it's got to be one of them because they showed up a couple minutes after one, meaning maybe all the bullshit happened and then they were looking for things. Yeah, and I'm going to go for yeah. the tall one because if it matters, he's the one who could reach the counter. Yeah. Because, like, directing this to Gina wouldn't help our case. 
It was the witnesses currently in the stand. The Skulkin brothers. Hmm. What? This does not agree with what brothers said in testimony before. They said they did not even have time to pull dukes from Lucy Lockett's. My phrase book says dukes is meaning hands and Lucy Lockett's is meaning pockets. But is this another lie? Is this what you are saying? Yes, I'm afraid so. Oh, now hold on a minute there. You can't be sure of that. I quite agree. The accused is a common pick purse, after all. It's perfectly possible that she went through the rooms on the desk to see what she might steal. I think that's unlikely. And why, exactly? As you can see from this photographic print, the defendant was pointing a gun at a victim. It would seem as my... Oh. Uh, okay. It would seem as my learned friend indicated that she was coercing <coughs> Mr. Winderbank to open the storeroom door. In other words, Miss Lestrade's interests lay within the storeroom, not in the main shop, giving her no reason to touch anything on the counter. All of which points to one thing. The Skulkin brothers have omitted key facts in their testimony. But the accused is a pick purse. Come and gutter trash. Why look any further for the wrongdoer here? Man, uh, Will voices all the racists. Siv's voice, uh, Siv voices the, all classists. the classists. I can't wait to see which yeah. is I voice. Mm. <laughs> Ooh, <bonk>. Sorry. <laughs> because the Skulkin brothers are thieves, madam. No better and no worse than Gina. Oh. Obviously, the is the obviously the is Judo is the cutest. Aww. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that these brothers were looking for something <laughs> on the victim's <laughs> counter that night. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, if you would condemn- His hair isn't long enough so he reaches over and twirls one of Iris's ringlets. <laughs> <laughs> if you would condemn the defendant on the grounds that she's a pickpocket, would it not at least be right and proper to thoroughly scrutinize testimony given against her by two thieves? Classist problems require classist solutions. <laughs> <laughs> well said. I for well would like to hear more from that shady pair. Amy made popcorn and no one Go get some, Sim. Nah, it's fine. Can you all see now? Oh, I think you'll find stereoscopes aren't playthings. You've seen their extraordinary potential first hand. Innocent. Punks in <laughs> chat. <laughs> yeah, let's oh, get punks in chat. Stop. Must purchase after trial. Stop. We'll return home via Regent Street. Stop. <laughs> Not guilty. Stop. <laughs> Instead of yelling stop, just yells punk. Punk. Well, it would seem this trial has yet to run its course. The ladies and gentlemen of the jury have declared their inclinations via the mighty scales of justice. I hereby call this summation examination to conclusion with the balance altered in the defendant's favor. Two lean to guilty, four lean to not guilty. Accordingly, the jury is without consensus. And I order this trial to continue. Yay, well done. Oh, by the way. What? You should hold on to this, Runo. You never know when it might come in useful. I, the phrase come in useful always strikes me as wrong. <laughs> Twice Weird, in one, yeah. twice in one trial would be unusual, surely. But all right. Uh huh. Well, Lord I, Van Zeeks. I doubt it, but let's look at it because this game keeps burning me. Yeah. This is really nice. Oh. Can we open this and find something? Yeah, and then we look for the eyepieces. No. Okay. I bet we're gonna have to later, though. You yeah. might be able to grab the latch. And then open it. Good call. Yeah. Blink. Whoa. That's really neat. What it do? You boys love pressing <laughs> buttons. That's where I would have. Anyone hiding secret. in there? Any secrets? Oh, that's actually like a good a idea. Face. <laughs> it doesn't look ah. like there's anything. Well, hey there, Van Zeeks. Uh. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Mm. 
You will instruct the witnesses, then the court demands additional testimony from them. Fuck. I'm sure it won't spoil the bouquet to do so, my lord. Ryunosuke. That's me. I've won myself another chance to probe that pair about their activities that night at least. And I won't stop probing them until I've proven until I've proven that China is inicent. <laughs> Ryunosuke having a strong Okay. To be continued. Dun dun. Colobondulence. <laughs> Sorry if it's kinda stinky. <laughs> Will, I'm gonna yeah. smack you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I cut it out because it, it was a little long, but originally that exchange was a little stinky. Everyone yells at Will and I'm wheezing and I go, I hate that. I saw in I, I saw the sprite change and I saw the word kinda stinky in like <laughs> bullet time before you said it. <laughs> Order please. Let us resume proceedings. Witnesses, you will now take you we take the stand. <laughs> I don't know what they're so worried about. Got my <laughs> chips. I presume you heard the defense counsel's summation examination. Oh, uh, John, John Lennon. Oh, yeah, <laughs> governor. <laughs> John Lennon. I did, Gov, I did. Mr. and Mrs. It's so weird. Mr. and Mr. Skulkin. Cool. Blimey. <laughs> this is going to be hard work. Earlier in this trial, you gave the following testimony about your actions after you entered Winterbanks. Well, it was bedlam soon, wasn't it? It was that shit was. Didn't even have time to pull me dukes out me, Lucy Lockets. He looks like a tanuki. Uh, yeah, he really oh. looks like one. <laughs> However, that was a lie. You brothers! Cool! Lie me! On the night in question, you rifled through the items on the victim's counter. <laughs> <laughs> we never done nothing of the sort! How'd you figure that out? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> fucking uh, fucking wet bandits from home alone. <laughs> you will now give formal testimony once again. You will tell the court precisely what happened on the night in question, and this time you will tell the truth. Each lie that passes your lips serves to increase the severity of your punishment. Oh. And that, gentlemen may deal a crushing blow to your chances of ever seeing the light of day again. <laughs> a thought worth pondering, perhaps. Say no more, Gov, we hear you. Well, Brad, we'll squeak, we'll peach. We'll peach. That's our brother's fruit. Peach, he's dummy thick. Stop. <laughs> All right, we did knock a few things over, but we weren't rifling for nothing. It was when we had the gunshot sea, made us both jump and all that stuff went flying. No me, it didn't give me, no me, it didn't give, what? It didn't enough give me a fright. We was thinking the shoot had come out the door and get us next. We stuck everything back where we found it and scuppered straight into him in the back. <coughs> we couldn't have shot the pawnbroker, see? We never had a chance, did we? Diamonds, Diamonds and emeralds. Diamonds and emeralds. <laughs> That's what we were looking for. Hmm. So you admit the defense's accusation. You did indeed ransack Mr. Winterbank's countertop on the night of question. Uh, not ransack, God, no, no. That's right, Nash, that's all right. It's uh, more like we tidied up, yeah. Uh, sorry. <laughs> By their own admission, these brothers entered the pawnbrokery under dubious circumstances. Can I grab my food real quick? So be it. Hello, chat. Have you anything to say to Van Zeeks? What is it, Siv? 
Bro, you're gonna need a liver replacement by the time you're tomorrow. By the time you're tomorrow? We needn't worry. I know of a good surgeon. Good fucking luck there. Can you do a goofy voice? Yes. He hoo ha hoo ha. No, yes. I mean, can you do a goofy impression? Mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> However, they panicked and fled on hearing the gunshot, having first made good their mess. Oh. How's that wine, buddy? Delicious. The way you say it, we hardly sound like roughs at all. We don't, Nash, we don't. Can't he make us sound a bit more cutthroat? Who are these fucking bonsai blasters? It can't just mm -hmm. be coincidence that these men showed up at Winterbanks that night. There's more to their testimony than meets the eye, I'm sure of it. Well, it's kind of a bad chicken sandwich thing. Aww. It's not their fault, it's just a bad cut of chicken. Sometimes you get that. Or all right, we did knock a few things over, we weren't rough or nothing. Okay. Oh god, he's got the cheek jiggle physics too! Run, run, run. You to come out the door and get us next. That's probably not true, so... Hold it. So, you didn't try to open the storeroom door then? Not on your life! It went deathly quiet after that, it did put the wind right off me. But anyway, the door was locked, weren't it? No way, that was opening. Yes, of course, it was locked from the inside. Or so we've been led to believe. It was, Gav, it was, from the inside. Right, so we had no way of knowing what was going on in there, did we? Unless Whoa. there was some other way to get a view of the inside of the storeroom, like a little cat door, like through a keyhole, or... A spy hole, perhaps. Don't ring no bells. Don't light no lights. We've had a cut run before we noticed anything like that. I thought it was a song. Come on, man. We're still cutting old teeth in this game, see? But one day... We'll really, we'll really cut the mustard. Cut the mustard. Please, cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> But as we know, behind that door was the victim's lifeless body, with the accused not two feet away. Yes, unfortunately. China was in there unconscious with the gun in her hand. Uh, to confirm, would it be correct to say that neither of you set foot inside the storeroom? That's right, Gov, that's right. Couldn't have, even if we wanted to. Ooh. Okay. Ugh, oh, man. It's like an aggressively tough chicken patty. Oh. Um, yes, whereupon you fired a shot from your own gun at Mr. Herlock Sholmes. I, um, yeah, um, we was a bit hasty there. We was, now we was, truth be told, I was already shaking like a leaf when you lot turned up. If you shaking like a leaf, don't put a loaded gun in your hand! Good advice, miss, good advice. Truth be told, that's the wrong voice. Truth be told, my mind went totally blank. Before your mind goes totally blank, make sure you don't have a loaded gun in your hand! Uh, a mental note made, miss. Oh, after that, we legged it down to the street, but... John Lennon, John Lennon, God help me, help me! <laughs> John, <laughs> John Lennon, John Lennon, John It's John all Lennon. up in me nose, I gotta keep remembering, I keep losing it. Apparently, we look dodgy to the coppers of summit, so they clap the jobbies on us like winking. What did I just say? <clears throat> what came out of my mouth? <laughs> <laughs> And after you'd been handcuffed, the police found this revolver in your position, correct? Um, well, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, well, listen, that proves it, doesn't it? John Lennon, John Lennon. John yeah, Madden. John Lennon is our point of reference. Yeah, it's all about Lennon. Oh. 
Yeah. <laughs> we couldn't have shot the bone broker. We never had a chance. Did you know? And Does why should we evolve? believe that? Uh, well, because well, ah, it's true, ah, ain't it? Ah. The place was totally... <laughs> the place was totally empty when I went in. <laughs> At that time, the victim was already in the storeroom, having been forced to open the door by the accused who had a gun in his hand. In other words, on the night in question, these two witnesses never even laid eyes on the proprietor of the pawnbroker, Mr. Winterbank. Correct. You, you, you. You got it, mister. Down to a T. Hmm. Hmm. So the Skulkin brothers never actually encountered Mr. Winterbank. Is that really true, I wonder? That's it. That's the full extent of their testimony. What is it, Bruno? You look very fierce. Thank you. Slay queen. <laughs> <laughs> yes, queen. <laughs> <laughs> I could put you some herbal tea if you could die. <laughs> oh, thank you, but I'm fine. Being such a logical thinker, you'll probably laugh. But I feel as though these brothers are still hiding something. Something important. It is nothing more than a feeling, though. I've no proof to support it. <laughs> Stupid people are very apt to know important things for some reason. So I, in the chat, I'm... slay my learned friends. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was just about to read out. It's very funny. Please do it in the actual voice. Slay my learned friend. <laughs> Weak. Slay. <laughs> I have no right to make these jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Frankly, nobody does. <laughs> <coughs> oh god. Slay. Well, do please. forgive the discourtesy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, alright. <laughs> Feelings can be very logical at times. Sorry? People's expressions, the movement of their eyes, the words they choose. You can take all that in and your brain will quietly analyze it to come up with meaning, like you described. You've concluded that there's something suspicious about the testimony without knowing why, that's all. It's called your gut. I think you should trust your instincts. Iris, thank you. Sometimes I think if she's ten years old, I must be five. Yas, your honor. She was simply <laughs> slain. Go <laughs> bossing, if you will. I hate this! Ah! <laughs> I created a monster! Punk, my learned friend. <laughs> <laughs> if that's the case, why didn't... No. We ain't exactly squeaky clean, are we? We ain't, Nash, we ain't. If we admitted to something like that, people would think we were something no good. Well said, Ringo, <laughs> me old China. We only China, you say. I hate that place. We <gasps> only... We'd only land all sides <laughs> of... in chat. God save the Yas Queen. <laughs> <laughs> Horrid, horrendous, negative a million. And in fact, now, as a result of lying in your previous testimony, that's exactly what you've done. Landed yourself in even more trouble. Oh, well. <laughs> that's rotten luck, says the rotten apple eater. Witnesses, explain your actions to the court. Why did you ransack the victim's counter? We never ransacked nothing. Right, that's right. More like we tidied the place up. Mm. Uh, sorry. Okay. Whoop! <laughs> um, I don't think I pressed this, but after that I believe I pressed all five. So what you're saying is, the sound of the gunshot shocked you so much that you knocked all those things off the counter. Well, it shocked one of us that much. Oh, no. Well, it shocked one of us that much, eh? Uh, this bag of nerves need to learn to keep his shirt on. Look, it was loud, all right. Blimey, me dead granny would... It's also your dead granny, so it's a little sad. Thank you for c confirming. I think they would have been confused otherwise. Big brother here screamed like a blooming baby and fell over on the counter. He knocked over loads of books. Loads of money! Loads of books, a candlestick, <laughs> some skull, whatnot. There it is. <clears throat> that got tangled in some marionette wing. What knocked over a picture frame? What knocked them scales on the floor? 
You've really mastered. You've really mastered working quietly then. <laughs> what a racket! Me granny would have been scared back to a grave at a clatter like that. So in short, the gunshot took you by surprise. I named some. Oh, oh, what? Oh, right. oh, oh, Gregson. <laughs> <laughs> what the? Holy shit, that was timed so perfectly. <laughs> what the <laughs> hell? <laughs> like I keep saying, I don't appreciate being lumped in with these scoundrels. I like you, Gregson. No, yeah. something to add about that testimony. You seem to react just now at what Mr. Skulkin said. Did it make you think of something? Hmm. It's probably nothing, of course. I wouldn't even bother to mention it, only... Well, the fact is, cases don't get sold if you ignore the little details. How about you just tell us what's in your mind? As you know, we brought these fellas in to the yard for questioning last night. The statement they gave then told a slightly different story to what they're saying now. Oop. Uh. Um, <laughs> did it? You claimed you heard the victim shout something out before the gunshot. My ear got my ear does ring a bell now, you mean it? Granted, it's only a minor detail, but still. I can't help but f I can't help feeling like perhaps you've been a bit sloppy with your testimony here, eh, fellas? If I discover the witness's testimony has been any more sloppy than it has hit hitherto so, proven to be. Sorry, Will, can you can you read that one more time with the correct pronunciation oh. of the word in quotes? <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely right. If I discover the witness's testimony has been any more sloppy than it has <laughs> hitherto to proven to be. I shall be forced to bring the very harshest punishment to bear against them. Sloppy. Sloppy. Easy, easy. We're getting right this time. This is kind of a rare instance in Ace Attorney where perjury is immediately punished. <laughs> That's not very common. God. Ah. I don't think I could eat this. It's like the toughest chicken I've ever had. Let me toss this, unfortunately. Oh. I, I did my best. I made it like two thirds of the way through the sandwich, but it really does feel like I'm eating vulcanized rubber. Oh. Mm. All right, let's try again. Sloppy. <laughs> Such sloppy chicken. No. <laughs> Such investigation. This was not my intention. I don't want them to find the truth. No. I just want to kill the rich. I want to eat the rich. <laughs> yeah, me too, buddy. I was trying to eat a little bit lighter by not getting a burger, and I am punished for it. Aww. All right. Well, see? You got this all coming back to me now. Then speak. <laughs> Supplement your testimony with whatever details have miraculously returned to your questionable minds, sirs. <laughs> Right, you are goofy. <laughs> uh, oh, right. I didn't realize it was talkable because it's in free. Just before the gunshot, we heard a voice yelling out, Give me that gun! So, in fact, you heard the voice and the gunshot almost simultaneously. We did good, we did. Although, oh, I suppose if you're being honest, we heard a kind of wavering voice before the yell and all. If you don't want to get shot, give me that gun. Give me that gun! <laughs> <laughs> kind of thing. He fell off his orange box. A career in acting tragically missed. Hey, don't be rude. <laughs> <laughs> Dead on. Perfect. I wanted to be an actor. <laughs> and where were the voices coming from? Could you tell? Of course we could. From the other side of the door behind the counter it was. From the storeroom where the victim was found dead. And the voice you heard, it was that of the victim, Mr. Winderbank. Just what walked out the door. <laughs> I'll make Granny's life. Of course it was. Oh, this Granny's life? Caught it was. Your grandmother is dead. So what? So 
That means that you both knew Mr. Windebank and the sound of his voice. Ah! So that would mean... I, I keep losing it too. Oh, John Lennon, John Lennon. <laughs> Paul Hollywood. So Ooh, that would mean... What? No, no banana for poor baby Paul. <laughs> <laughs> what, Nash? What? Any ideas? Yes, Council. Indeed it would. No, no, no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Hey, hey, hey. I, I hate the Beatles. I, yeah, yeah. I, I don't like their music and I hate John Lennon. I like Paul McCartney well enough. And Ring, Ringo also sucks. <laughs> we didn't yeah, know the correct. geezer. How am I supposed to deny when the bloke in all the fancy club was giving us the evil eye? Don't fucking look at me like that, Gump! If you value your lives, you will ensure your testimony is accurate and true. Oh, me granny's life it is! Oh, all his granny's life it must be! It's a good job, it's, it's a good job his granny's dead. To summarize then, immediately after hearing the voice of the victim, you then hear the gunshot, causing you to stumble and upset the items on the counter, scattering them over the shop floor. You make it sound like we're clumsy. Don't forget we tied it up after like good little boys. Anyway, the way I see it. Okay. <laughs> the brothers canonically saying John <laughs> Lennon before every sentence. <laughs> It's like when Moogles say Koopo. Koopo! Koopo. 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 There's an R there somewhere. You're not sure where, though. Koopo in the two strings. Koopo. Yeah. <laughs> That's a really good movie. You're saying Never it. seen it. It's so fucking good. You, I think you'd like it, Will. I, I it hate samurai neat. epics, and it's really good. Um... It's like how Golden Kamui is a Western, and I think Westerns are usually shit. Westerns are usually shit. Koopa! <laughs> so <Koopa. funny. laughs> You're saying that Mr. No, you're saying that Mr. Winderbank had a gun in his hands. Oh, yeah. yeah they're infecting the, the entire courtroom. We must evacuate them immediately. We must quarantine immediately. <laughs> Rianosuke goes to rub his eyes. He pulls his hands away. He's got the black eyes. The now. Nuki marks? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, but that was his side, huh? Two of them waving guns at each other. Must have got pretty heated. I mean, just before we shouted out, we heard the geezer say, if you don't want to get shot. Didn't really sound like he made it, mate. More like an empty threat, you could say. Mr. Winterbank was known to keep a revolver on his shop counter at all times. People say that to protect the articles in his keeping, he'd readily put a bullet in someone's head if required. That someone being himself, of course. Good grief! Extraordinary devotion indeed, if alarmingly misguided. Well, we John so Lennon is actually a spell they're casting. John Lennon. <laughs> well, John Lennon. certainly sounded like he was ready to pull the trigger the other night. Only the person he was going <coughs> to shoot beat him to it. Cooked his goose proper. Bet he wished he'd squeeze the trigger instead of wasting time shouting, give me that gun. Good gun. Good. <laughs> And it was directly after those words that you heard the goon shot. It was more or less at the same time, Gov. Give me that goon, Goof! Bam! Bam! Obviously you mean Goof. <laughs> kind of thing. Yes, a career in acting. Very tragically missed. That we had the sound of someone hitting the deck. Before we every... miss every fucking one of them. Look at Ringo's <laughs> face. Look at Ringo's I love little that. face. Before everything went dead quiet. After that, we've done a slapdash job tidying the place up. I know I've said it before. This game is so charming. Yeah, it's really <laughs> good. This is probably the best Ace Attorney game, I think. Um, okay. Bloke would own the place was holding a gun. That's not right. Because Gina was the one holding the gun. Yeah. 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 Mm. Okay, just checking that that was the right of the two photographs. Objection! Objection! Hey, dipshit! <gasps> hey, dipshit! The victim, Mr. Winterbank, was wielding a gun. Is that correct? I'll see, Gov, you got the picture. Yes, now she is. No question. 
And yet the photographic evidence from the time of the incident clearly shows that Mr. Winterbeck was not in possession of a firearm of any description. Objection. <coughs> you surprise me. Someone check. Gina must have reflected that bullet using a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> Does the defense really intend to highlight evidence that compromises the position of the accused even more? <sighs> Furthermore, the defense has failed to establish that the photographic print presented was taken a suitably short time prior to the victim's death. Your chronology is severely lacking, counsel. Yay, that's right. Too right, and that's too right. The old geezer could have been about to turn the tables on the girl, eh? Hardly likely. Oh. No, I'm afraid. <laughs> Continue with the cross-examination, counsel. Huh. Rare that you can present evidence, not get dinged for it, and not move anything hmm. forward. Maybe maybe we have to, like, pull out some other piece of uh, testimony first, and then that's the correct thing? Maybe, that's, yeah. That's interesting. Hmm. Well, I mean, that's nice. Yeah, no, that's true. So, clearly, like, Cleary is correct, but we haven't pressed something else quite yet. I was thinking the cheater come out the door and get us next. Let's, How uh, would they have known that there was a door there if there was a curtain? I mean, they probably looked at it. Um, I mean, the, cur the curtain was drawn. Okay. Um, you mean drawn back or drawn, like, close? Drawn back. I want to look at my evidence again. What do we have? Uh, Chad is saying that side pressing is important here. Oh. Okay. Uh, did I, was there a cue in there that I missed somewhere or? I don't know. Never had a chance, did we? I mean, this is the newest one we got, so I feel like it's gotta be on here, and maybe I missed it. Let me, uh, let's take a look. Two of them waving guns at each other? Yeah, it's just, it's really strange. Some don't have bubbles. Really? Because he's wiggling his... That's a weird. You can't press that at all or compare the two? I mean, normally you, uh, normally you get like a little ding. I don't. How did both of them have guns? I don't know. Okay. <clears throat> Wait, hold on. He says the bloke that owned the place was holding a gun, but he's not shown holding a gun instead of in, in any of the pictures. I know, we just presented that. Oh, okay. I thought that I did. Never mind. No. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not an oops. That's not what I wanted to do. Uh, you guys can go ahead and tell me what to do here. I feel like we got it, but, like, we're just... Yeah, we're just missing a piece or something. Like look looking at the for... autopsy. Why? Oh. Oh, okay. because he was shot from behind, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. duh. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's true. Give me that gun. Do I pr present it here? Because this would imply he can see her. I feel like, yeah, maybe there? Uh, I... Yeah, I... This doesn't really say to me, like... 
the notable thing about these two statements is not that he's like facing her in any way. So I wouldn't have thought of that. Yeah, I'll try it, I guess. Okay. I feel like that's a little obtuse. Where's the autopsy report? Yeah, there's no other signs of trauma. Statement three crime scene photograph. Didn't we do that? Statement three. Crime scene photograph. Oh, it's it's the picture of him lying on the ground. Instead God of the fucking damn it. Ugh. Uh, uh, where is it? This one? There it is. Yeah. Ew. That's Objection. whatever. That's a little wonky. I'm I'm glad they didn't ding us for the other thing, but like I feel like I feel like that's an unnecessary distinction. Because you could have just been like, he didn't have another gun because she had his gun and we confirmed it was his gun. I think it's a little silly. On that night in question, the victim, Mr. Windbank, was wielding a gun. Is that correct? I see, girl, you got the picture again? Yes, no, she has no question. And yet, photographic evidence obtained immediately after the incident clearly shows that Mr. Windbank was not holding a firearm of any description. Uh, you what? Golden penny! That ain't right! Objection. There can be no question that the victim's revolver was used in the incident. I would recommend the court that Mr. Winderbank's gun was found at the scene. I would remind. Not only was it I- Whoa, hi, I'm here now! Not only was it identified as the murder weapon, but it was found in the accused's hand. Who's Gordon Bennett? You know, he's that chef guy. <laughs> Sloppy! Oh my God, they're stands, they're stands. Yo, that mole tooler you what? <laughs> that mole tooler used the victim's own gun to finish him off. Give me That's that gun! One of my words. Oh yeah. <laughs> um In it. In it. Hello, Gordon! <laughs> and stay exactly where you are, right there. Eh? If the crime had taken place as you as you so colourfully describe in your testimony, it would give rise to an undeniable and significant inconsistency in the final moments you just acted out. Goodness, are you sure, Counsel? You intrigue me, my learned friend, but let's see some evidence to support your claim. Where is the proof that demonstrates this inconsistency in witnesses' portrayal of the victim's final moments? Well, he was found in the back room, bro. According to their testimony, the witnesses claim to have heard a shout of Give me the, that gun following the gunshot. Following. Indeed. With the two events happening almost simultaneously, or so we've been led to believe. Yes, that's right. Now, if that testimony is true, it would mean that at the moment of death, the victim and his attacker would have been facing each other. However, if the autopsy report, in the autopsy report, it clearly states that the victim died instantly after being shot from behind. <laughs> so, as I stated before, there is an undeniable inconsistency in your testimony, Mr. and Mrs. S I, every time. Skulkin. Nya! You know, like, no, but, no. but it's the God's honest truth. It is no sh it is when he was shot that night. The shopkeeper had a gun in his hand. We saw it with our own bleed nut. You saw it, did you? Did I hear you right just now? You saw him holding a gun. You saw it. Some might that, maybe. Ladies and gentlemen. What the fuck is wrong with you two? You have all just heard admit, admission by these two witnesses that on the night in question, they actually saw with their own eyes the victim wielding the gun. Which I love this comment in chat. One of them is trans. You get to pick who. <laughs> Which can only mean that despite their testimony to the contrary, the Skulkin brothers must have encountered the victim in person. Uh, um. Um, no, um, no. no. <laughs> right, these guys are idiots. I got my chips. Order, order, order. Witnesses, explain yourselves at once. Well, someone plot twist, it's Gregson is trans. 
trans. Good for him. <laughs> Good for him. This bitch trans. Good for him. <laughs> well, the thing is, it weren't supposed to. <laughs> it would seem that my previous warning fell on deaf ears. I made it quite clear that false witness would be the death of you. <laughs> Am I to understand that you replaced the untruths of your original testimony with renewed lies? <laughs> uh, so sorry. Oh, I've been up in my HRT in these fish and chips. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Governor. To try to see we um. Cut it out now, cut it out, but blub now you know what you'll do to us. He? Who are they talking about? Strong heart! <laughs> Let me make your position here perfectly clear. I'm just really hoping that McGilded is still alive and still the main antagonist because I want to keep voicing him. <laughs> yeah. You will talk. There is no other option available to you. Uh, Rolf, come on, the game's up. Ooh. You have a good forgotten. In case it hasn't quite sunk in yet, no matter how hard you try to hide it, the truth will come out. Much like Gregson, congratulations. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> uh, um. Used to be Greg Daughter, now it's Gregson. Good for you. <laughs> that's you. Oh, that's me. Sorry, I was so proud of Gregson over here. On the night in question, it is now apparent that you brothers met face to face with the victim. Van Zeke's Killing the Beatles, Acrylic on Canvas, 1899. <laughs> Amazing. I demand that you testify again to explain the precise circumstances under which this meeting took place. Um, well... Do we have to? On pain of death, I suggest you make yourselves fully aware that this is your very last chance. Shit. Normally I'm annoyed with characters that like drag it out, but I like these two so much, it's fine. Right, so we just got inside the gaff and he'd sigh of relief when the geezer showed his mug. Give me that gun, he bellowed, and then he flew at us like he was possessed. I thought he'd had it. For an old geezer, he bloke as strong as an ox, he chucked me over the counter. I pulled my gun on him, and then he legged it through that door in the back room. We never had nothing to do with killing him. That's all that happened, I swear. Oh, okay. So you're now telling us that moments before the victim was killed in the storeroom, you in fact encountered him in the main part of the shop. Um, well, yeah, sorry. Well, we find ourselves at an interesting juncture. This changes matters considerably. Uh, but, but honest, Governor, <coughs> this time... This time, Nash, this time, we ain't got nothing more to hide. Very well. Counsel for the defense, you may proceed with your cross-examination. Yes, Again. my lord. This is it. The moment I've been waiting for. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, little face. Boom. Okay. Yeah, sure. Chucked you over the counter. Yes, I noted that you mentioned the counter in your previous testimony, too. Well, yeah, of course we did. They knocked over a load of books, a candlestick, and some skull whatnot. They got tangled in some marionette, what knocked over a picture frame, what then knocked them scales on the floor. So, in fact, it wasn't the sound of the gunshot that knocked you and made you knock those things off the counter. Well... Big brother here went flying over that counter like a flying over that counter like a gunshot, I can tell you. Then the old geezer pinned him. He did, no, she did. If you hadn't been there, the bloke would have flattened me like a blooming pancake in seconds. At the time in question, the alarm was raised at the local police station via a secret cable from the pawnbrokery. There is a button under the counter used to activate it, which was presumably pressed by the victim. That's right, when the, blo when the bloodies fled the scene and back onto the street, they ran straight into the arriving police, didn't they? Poor Mr. Winterbank, he did everything he could to protect his shop. 
No, no, no. no. <laughs> Pardon me, God, no. I'm gonna make through that door into the back room. Okay. Guy shakes his head like a snake slithering. Were you intending to shoot Mr. Winterbag? No, 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 never. Oh, oh it's just, you know, you know. Uh, no. Yeah. Looking out for my brother, or no? He was being flattened, I forget. By a man whose shop was being burgled, yes. And then, the man fled into the storeroom when you pointed your gun at him, is that it? Yes, it. He shoved me away, then ran off through that door and shot himself in. There's something off about that last remark. Something that's something. Hmm, I wonder why Mr. Winterbank ran away into the storeroom. What? Oh. Well, according to I. Let me talk, please! <coughs> I didn't catch the last bit there! It's alright, you pretty much got 90% of it. Okay, Ginny was in there waiting for him, with a gun. Ah, oh, yes, that's right. Gina allegedly used Mr. Winterbank's oh. gun to th <laughs> force him to open the storeroom door. In which case, how did the gun end up in Mr. Winterbank's hands again? I have no idea, but that is strange, isn't it? This little inconsistency could be significant. I should make mental note of it. Look, the point is, me and me brother. That's right, Nash. That's right, me and me brother. We ever had nothing to do with killing him. That's all that happened, I swear. Right through that door into the back room. That is a little strange. <laughs> Why does Jello say Gina? And not Gina. It's a Because he's making fun of me. I'm not making fun of you this time. I'm making Yeah, yeah. No, because of the character uh the, sh the character mispronounced Suzato's name, so I called her Gina uh -huh. back. Regina Berry was making fun of you. This is not. <laughs> Regina! Regina! I'm Regina! <laughs> I love playing Regina Berry, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Um, let's press it, please. They got chucksterred. When you say Giza, I presume you mean the victim and proprietor of the shop, Mr. Winterbank. Who else? Sorry, I, I mean, that's right. Well, it was all, well, I was keeping a close eye on the entrance to the gaff, obviously, but we never, th uh, we never thought no one was going to come out of the back room like that. The back room being the pawnbrokery's store. Yeah, that must be where he popped up from, only place he could have been. I just like pulled a muscle in my back, now I'm just like... <laughs> oh no! So it would seem the victim was already in the storeroom when these brothers entered the premises. Which means, Ginny must have been there at that point as well. Is the circus case from Ace Attorney 2 the worst case in the series? Nope, that's the la that's Turnabout Ablaze, the final case from Ace Attorney Investigations 1. There is nothing good about that case, and it's enormously <laughs> long. But that doesn't make sense, does it? If Gina had threatened Mr. Winterbank into the storeroom with her at gunpoint, then why would he have emerged from the same room all alone when the brothers arrived? Uh, I don't know. Did you see the accused at that time? What? That, that John Lennon, that Moulton, <laughs> couldn't tell you. No way, Kobo, we had bigger fish to fry then. I mean, the old geese had just lost it. Alright. Okay. Oh, I bet it's a thing of he was yelling, give me that gun uh, to Regina. And then. Oh, Gina. yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. Um. Oh, yeah, Gina, not Regina. <laughs> Regina. Regina. Trucking right over the counter, nothing weird about that. He legged it through the door to the back room. I don't know how to press that. Isn't okay. it, like, locked? Isn't that door, like, always locked or something? No, also he would be able to open it. I think she was already yeah, in there like... and they'd unlocked it. Um, let's mm. see. Okay, it's not that yet. Is uh, it the layout of the room? It could the be. Floor plan? Let's find out. Uh, I'm just gonna look at all my evidence again because it's been a while. Cat. What does this say? Gentleman's overcoat. Okay, it's not this. Okay. Okay. Why is this on? The cat? That was me. 
I don't think we can... There's nothing on this yet. I'm pretty sure we've looked at it. Yeah. Very cute signature. I don't think we've looked at these. Uh... Hmm. Okay. Shot from behind. So I'm gonna guess they shot him as he ran away. Um, but I don't know how to... Yeah, could have easily shot him. So that him you right. turned auto on? I don't know what that means. Yeah, I'm not sure where I turned that. I have to be in the normal thing to turn that off, and I'm not right now. Okay. Um, knocked him over the counter. I think he could have shot him as he went through there. Is there a shot that shows that door with its... Because there's a... I swear to God, there's like a little kitty cub. Like, or like a, there like sure this, is. Yeah. I can't oh, see it. Oh, it's not no. there. It's not on that door. Because they used uh, uh, Iris's thing to open it. There it is. There it is. But I... Oh, there. Yeah. I, oh, I think I'm a step ahead. That seems wrong yeah. right now to me. Give me a second. Let me turn off auto before I forget. I don't know how to do that. Options, maybe? Ugh. Um, there it is. F. Oh, F autoplay. Got it. Yay! Whoop, 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 whoop. Oh, maybe I should have... Here, let me actually look at what they have to say. That might help me. Oh! John Lennon. John Lennon. John Lennon. John Lennon. Okay. I'm opening so a new line something. of shirts. Yep. I've got a brand new clothing line called John Lennon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what? Alright. Um, I don't know how to get where I want to get here. Get heaved a sigh of relief. Well, I don't think I pressed this yet. Why did you heave a sigh of relief? When yeah. You, that doesn't make any sense. Were you running from something? When, oh, no, I did this one already. Back room, he popped up from the back room. So clearly he, Gina was not an aggressor. They were just in the back there together. Mm -hmm. uh, he walked out, saw these two, turned around, told Gina to give him the gun. He flew at us like he was possessed. Let's press this as well. I'm just going to press everything again. I think I missed at least one. Couldn't hurt. Yelling on the other side of the door. Oh, um, uh, did we? Oh, okay. This Ooh. is new. I somehow didn't press this yet. But the truth is, he was shouting those words at you, wasn't he? Oh, well, <laughs> he was the victim, Mr. Winterbank, wielding a gun at the time. Was he ever blowing me lummy and great ugly barrel he had pointing straight at me frontispiece? John Lummy. So what you're saying is, you definitely saw Mr. Winderbank with the gun at that time, correct? It is good that it is spot on. Then all of a sudden he came at us, he did. It was Bedlam, I didn't know who was going for who. You were clearly all going for each other. Like Nash said, we thought we'd had it, I mean. Okay. Ch I'm pretty sure I already pressed this, but just to be sure. Yeah, you knocked over all that shit. I don't think that matters. Shut the hell up. Blah, 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 blah. You pulled your gun on him. And he legged it through that door. I, like, I, you definitely shot him. But I don't know how to get there. Were you intending to shoot him? No. He said that. No. He shoved me away. Yeah, no, he couldn't have shoved him away. Because if he was around that other corner... Yeah, like, why would he run from them? Because they had a gun. Maybe it's the floor plan. That's the best I've got offhand. Um, but let's... Let's press this last statement. 
Had nothing to do with it. Nothing at all. Nothing, gov, nothing. He always went and shot himself in the back room, didn't he? Looked it was from the inside. Yeah, there we you go. We know it was because we tried to open it. But it's a decent door, that one good and strong wouldn't budge an inch. So, in the end, the situation remains unchanged. Inside the storeroom with the pawn broker, there was only one other person. The sole person who could possibly have shot the victim with the accused Miss Gina Lestrade. Ah. Hmm, it would indeed appear so. What say you now, Consul? Was there anyone of... Uh... Uh... Yeah. I mean, not in that room. Could have done it by accident. L again. Cat accidents. I'll say that. I'll say that could have been. Yeah, there, there usually is like a. You say that, Mister and Mister Skulkin. Uh, what? What's that look for? From the moment you admit, uh, from the moment you admitted that you'd encountered the victim face to face that night, the course of this trial changed completely. It did. What is your point, my learned friend? The question we must answer is who could have shot Mr. Winterbank? And it is the belief of the defense that the defendant is not the only possible answer at all. I'm still here. You have my attention. In that case, let us return to this and the premises. Oh God, I hate these. The victim was killed in the storeroom, which was locked from the inside. Those are the facts. So pray, what other possible answer to the question of who shot the man could there be? Counsel, you must now provide answers to the court in respect of two conundrums. Two, my lord? Twice as many chances to be right, maybe? <laughs> Indeed, namely. Mm. From what location did the culprit shoot the victim, and furthermore, where was the victim at the time? Understood, my lord. You're right, you know. I'm not entirely sure, but there is one thing I'm sure about. If I can prove that there's a credible new alternative to what happened, it would change Gina's prospects hugely. So now, time for some clarity. Show the court on this plan the answers to the questions posed by his lordship. Okay, chat, this one I am fully... Please tell me what to do. I am unbelievably historically unlucky with these segments. Uh, man, there is, I, I don't know if I plan to do the Leighton cut down video, but there is one in the first case of the first witch trial of the Professor Leighton hmm. game where it is just bullshit. Through the window. The victim is, okay, hang on. Just outside the storeroom, okay. From where that person would have fired the gun. Yeah, like here, and you just shoot him through the door, right? Probably get a bit closer. This one's pretty sound. It's the exact spot you think. I mean, I was gonna do here, because he shoots him. But, uh, alright, I'll do this. Closer, okay. Sure, here we go. Take that! Let's believe Culprit could have shot the victim from here. And an answer. Where, where, where? Assuming the culprit fired from the location indicated, where was the victim at the time? Just inside. Rudder. Get inside the room. Okay. Take that! I hate these. They're very finicky. From outside the storeroom. Continue. Mr. Winterbank died instantly from a bullet wound in his back. Looking at the stain of blood on the storeroom floor, it doesn't appear that the body was moved after death. That much I did notice. Which tells us that he was almost certainly shot while he was in the storeroom. However, the crucial point is, where was the shooter when the fatal bullet was fired? So, you are adamant the shot was fired from outside the storeroom? Well, according to the, the Skulkin brothers said... John Lennon! <laughs> And if Mr. Winterbank ran away through the door, we have to assume that the door was open at the time. Ah. It was at precisely that moment when the victim was fleeing for his life. 
that these brothers had the perfect opportunity to shoot the man in the back once he was inside the storeroom. No! No! Come to think of it, <coughs> do you remember what the prosecutor said at the start of the trial? Nope. John Lennon. Moving on to the finding of <laughs> Scotland Yard's coroner. His report states that the bullet entered the body on a rising diagonal trajectory. It seems the victim was likely shot by someone significantly shorter in height than himself. That was wonderful. Thank you. Poor man. Shot while he was running as fast as he could for safety. Hmm. Frey, it was a fair impersonation, but you could have served to be a bit more racist. Ah, <laughs> of course. He would have been leaning forward as he was running away. So even if the bo okay, sure. So even if the bullet was fired horizontally, it still would have entered his body at an upward trajectory. Okay. Hey, the sure. The isn't necessarily someone shorter than Mr. Winderbank. Objection! Look how small Ringo is. I'm <laughs> sure my learned friend can't have forgotten that the storeroom door was found closed and locked from the inside. You claim the victim was shot as he fled into the room. Do you also claim his corpse was dexterous enough to turn the key in the lock? Uh, but, but, what if someone else locked the door? Yes, there is someone else who could have locked the storeroom door. In is fairness, if so? someone is shooting at you through a door, it's not an unreasonable idea to shut it. Lock the door, yeah. Yeah, blah, 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 this is happening. In which case, blah, 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 blah. Obviously, the person who locked the door was the only other person inside the storeroom at the time. The defendant, Miss Gina Lestrady. That's absurd. What kind of fucking name is that? You're suggesting that the accused deliberately engineered the sealed room. For what possible reason? Such actions would only serve to tighten the noose around their neck. I am inclined to agree, I must say. Well, counsel? Uh, yes. That's a tricky one, that, isn't it? Half-baked notions have no place in my courtroom, counsel. Remember that, please. But of course Ginny would have locked the door. It almost goes without saying, doesn't it? It does. Well, if I was Ginny in that situation, I know I would have locked the door as quickly as I could. I mean, those two burglars had just fired a gun in their direction, hadn't they? Oh, yes, obviously. Before the two brothers arrived, Miss Lestrade and Mr. Wendy Bank were in the store room <laughs> together. Wendy oh, Bank, Wendy Bank. To, uh, lean down a bit. I need to turn your wind key again. <laughs> this is how the robot started. Thank you. Now I don't know what was, I don't know what went on between them at that time, but at some point, Mr. Winderbank must have heard the intruders breaking into a shop and left the store room. Intruders, eh? Oh, that's us, bro. Jesus Christ. If yours. If your theory is correct, that would leave the accused alone in the storeroom. Yeah. Yes, it would. <laughs> then, probably only moments later, the victim fled back through the storeroom, hoping the storeroom door, hoping to escape danger. Bang. Bang. <laughs> Hit in the back by the bullet, Mr. Winterbank fell to the floor where he was, just inside the storeroom. And what we have to ask ourselves now is, what would the defendant have done in that moment? Oh, oh, oh I see where you're going with it. I love these two, they suck! Outside the storeroom was a terrifying killer who had just murdered Mr. Winderbank. As soon as that as soon as that threat struck Miss Lestrade, she slammed the door. I can't even do it every time it throws me off. In order to save her own life. Hold it! Hold it! But but I I mean we ain't the ones who done it! That's not the right we ain't good, We ain't. You gotta believe us. I mean, come on. We never okay. shoot no one. Objection. That's blatantly untrue. <laughs> <laughs> I know for a fact you would. Because <coughs> before my eyes, you shot Herlock Jones. Oh. There's only one logical conclusion here. Mr. and Mr. Skulkin, you brothers had every opportunity to have been the true perpetrators of Mr. Winderbank's murder. Oh, oh, oh. I mean, that doesn't explain how... That doesn't really explain not to give the prosecution points. Right, where does this leave us? You mean to say it wasn't a pickpocket? You shot the Hamburger after all. 
I should have known it was those brothers. Bah. That was amazing, Rainier. All the members of the jury seem to be firmly on your side now. I know. First time ever, and probably the last. Oh. Well, I think you've done it. Surely they'll have to give a verdict of no. Uh oh. <laughs> He's probably gonna point out that uh, it was Windebank's gun that shot Windebank, and there's no way they would have had that pistol, unless I guess. <laughs> He could have just left it on the desk. In admirable effort, my learned friend. Uh, what's this now? You find the situation amusing, Lord Van Zeeks. I myself find the defense's argument most persuasive. I dare say. Such chicanery is the bread and butter of the street performers in your provincial. Pro provincial. <laughs> I can't even be racist at you. <laughs> but such blatantly malicious conjuring tricks amount to nothing more than inexcusable pedophagy here. <laughs> what? Yes, I'm just making up words at this point. The hypothesis you put forward so ostensibly credibly cannot and will not stand. Because you see, it contains a fatal flaw. A, a fatal flaw? Do you mean to tell me that you're unaware of your logic's failing? I mean, you were unaware Gina was in the room. I say, huh? Lord Van Zeeks, it might be an idea to explain this ballet conjuring trick or whatever it is to the troops on the ground, hmm? The fatal flaw in my learned friend's argument is really very simple to understand. He is from Asia. <laughs> <laughs> Assuming you're not too dim-witted to count bullets. I don't count bullets! <laughs> oh dear, he noticed then. Someone, Koopa Loopy, Mr. Van Zeeks. Huh? What's everybody talking about? Council? Yes, sir? Tell the court how many bullets were found at the seat of the crime. Uh, two. Two bullets. Correct. The first, that which hit the victim in the back, ending his life. And the second, that which struck the detective, Mr. Herlock Sholmes, on his arrival at the scene. Indeed, the defense presented a picture showing the damage caused by the second bullet earlier in the proceedings. Bro, didn't it just go straight through him, though? Oh, wait. That blood belongs to who, then? Sherlock this, Sholmes. This is Sherlock. That's it. Okay, yeah. The bullet which injured uh, Mr. Sholmes appears to have passed through his body to strike the calendar. Yeah. Your lordship's understanding is correct. Oops, sorry. Furthermore... One moment. Uh, the revolver belonging oh. to the... Vi <laughs> Furthermore, we know there are two firearms involved in the incident. The revolver belonging to the victim, Mr. Windebank, and the Skulkin Brothers' revolver. The evidence shows that a single bullet was fired from each gun. Yes, indeed it does! A single bullet from each! Now then, my learned friend. It's not high for an abdomen when it's uh, Ringo is the one who shot him because he's pointing up. Yeah. That these two brothers shot Mr. Herlock Sholmes right before your eyes. Yes, I, I did. Oh my goodness, I think you'll find. That if a single bullet was fired from the brother's gun that hit Mr. Sholmes, that means... With the bank, not shot by same gun! Stop! Only one bullet! Pug! Exactly. Yes. This Nipponese street performer presented an ostensibly credible argument. However, it was never anything more than a diversionary trick with no hope of standing up to scrutiny. Uh, ah! Dead. Ooh. I shot him. Order! 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 Whoops. Ah! Gray. Forgive the discourtesy of flinging the dregs of this hallowed nectar into the public gallery. L Lord Van Zeeks! But this court needs to open its eyes. 
The accused, Miss Gina Lestrade, is no ordinary little girl. Despite her young years, she can, regrettably, no longer be described as a juvenile. No, the person in the dock is far from a law-abiding citizen. She has a past riddled with criminal conduct. The truth is, the accused broke into the pawnbrokery on the night in question with loathsome intent. As we can see beyond doubt in this print which depicts her threatening the victim with the murder weapon. And I have here in my possession one more piece of evidence the prosecution wishes to present. A disc? I'm Gregson. Rawr, 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 rawr. I'm Gina. Yes, that music box disc. Mr. McGilded's music box disc. The very day before the hateful murder of Mr. Winderbank, the accused attempted to make off with this article, which clearly doesn't belong to her. And with none of the subtlety of a pickpocket, I might add, but by brute force and brazen impudence. Good gracious! Make no mistake! Any sympathy for the accused on account of her years is misguided and dangerous. There are no depths to which this girl would not stoop if pushed, no crime she would not commit. The court forgets that fact at its peril. Hmm, I see. I think it would be prudent to take this music box disc into evidence, Council. Oh, oh Jesus Christ! Um, Lord Van Zeeks, I am... Um... Inspector Gregson? What? Yes, Inspector. We had a meeting yesterday at the yard with the prosecution service and, um... I think it would, it was agreed that the disc wouldn't be used as evidence. That's some like, you know, literally the queen level of importance here. We're not allowed to just shush, 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 shush. What's this all about? Why is the inspector acting strangely? That's the first time we've said anything to Van Zeeks at all. I am unaware of any such meeting. But, but those were the instructions right from the top. The government bigwigs were insistent. Inspector, I am the prosecutor, and I alone determine how to present my case. Your warning is noted. Thank you. Ah! Uh, the prosecution wishes to proceed with submitting this disc as evidence, Fuck my the lord. the queen! <laughs> Indeed, bailiff! The prosecution has established the accused's motive, opportunity, and baseness of character. I dare say, Gina Lestrade is indeed based, my lord. There is nothing more to add. Sorry, there was a bug. <laughs> ladies, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I await your informed decisions and rest my case. Innocent! <laughs> I don't believe it. I had the jury on my side for once, for all of five minutes. <laughs> Wasn't even for five minutes, you know? My lord, I wonder if I might say something at this point. Oh, yes, indeed. Been stumbling about in a bit of a fog up to now, truth be told, but all of a sudden, the answer's barely obvious to me and my men. There's only one thing for it. Oh, no. Very well, the court will hear from the jury. Ladies and gentlemen, you will now present your leanings as to the defendant's culpability. Guilty. 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 Stop. Guilty. Shit. Sorry. When you have eliminated the impossible, whatever remains must <laughs> be the truth. That's, that's my life. I wrote that. Also, you didn't eliminate anything. You just went, this bitch stinky. <laughs> How dare he use it against us? Don't worry, Iris. I don't think we're finished yet. There's still more to this case than we realize. There must be, because there's one thing that I'm absolutely certain of. Gina didn't shoot Mr. Winterbank. That's beyond any doubt. Very well. 
We will proceed with a second summation examination of the day. Mr. Foreman, are you and the other jurors ready? Garadam Squadron is primed and ready for action, sir. Very good. Yeah, so, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Yeah. You will each explain on what grounds you have now determined the defendant to be guilty. Stinky! Stinky? Stinky! 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 Stop! <laughs> Once a rogue, rogue always a rogue. No Once a rogue... <laughs> Dude, you were like just on the stand for accidental manslaughter. Yeah, you fucker. Well, I didn't do it, it was my maid. Who is now fired in case any one of the other jurors might happen to be interested in the position. <laughs> Not to mention I've recently been divorced. Surprising turn of events that was. You know what? Good for him. His wife was really shitty, dude. Yeah, she was awful. <laughs> I mean, like, he's kind of awful, too, in a certain way, but, like... But, like, I don't know. I... The the repeated physical abuse in front of company, to me, is a, a bigger... A bigger yeah, problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Once a rogue, always a rogue, I say. Hmm? Different breed, us law-abiding citizens. As only two bullets were found at the scene, I would say the whole case is done and dusted. You don't need a stereoscope to see the truth here. Every which way you look at it, it was that pickpocket. Hmm, I never imagined simple operation would cause me such grief. The accused attempted a theft on the previous day. I can see I'm in for a busy day ahead. I am ballistics expert. I have seen many shootings. Red there is rocket. nothing I do not know about the guns. This is my mouse and I love him. His name is hmm. Gun. <laughs> it would seem there is little remaining room for doubt. I have to admit, I was rather bowled over by the argument put forward by the chap in black. Hmm, but when that fell apart like a house of cards, I saw that I'd jolly well been hoodwinked. Well, no more. <sighs> The whole courtroom is turning against me. It's not fair. Iris, uh, the prosecutor's being mean. Just because Ginny's done some things she shouldn't have done in the past, that doesn't make her a murderer. Thank you for mm. providing me another bottle. Thank you for all these tears, my dear. Allow <gasps> me to savor this fruity vintage while I savor the spectacle of your fruitless debate on the murder. This is piss. Here, here's to the truth coming out, eventually. Take your time, Gregson. We all love and appreciate you. That's enough uh, preamble. Counsel, proceed with the summation examination. Any reason Aram's been gone? I don't know. He's just busy, uh, I guess. Uh, yes, uh, my lord. Just draws uh. the sword. <laughs> Listen, you shits! <laughs> Alright, I don't think it's this guy. Um, two bullets were found at the scene. I, that's accurate. Don't need a stereoscope. Don't see that guy. Let's talk to you again. <laughs> Would you please stop muttering about things that have nothing to do with this trial, sir? The defendant's life is on the line here. Mm, uh, well, the thing is, I couldn't really say that it's nothing to do with this trial, to be honest. Huh? I mean, it's no question that the man was shot, but the bullet had simply vanished from his stomach. It's quite inexplicable, don't you think? I almost don't want to ask, but this surgery you've been muttering about all this time, you were operating on. Oh, what was the fellow's name now? Herlick? No, Herlock? Herlock? Herlock Sholmes, by any chance. Oh, yes, good lord! With sparkly little eyes. It was that hair look, fellow! What? You, you're the surgeon that operated on Mr. Shows? That's right, using the very latest anesthesia techniques, I might add. It was a fairly major op, I can tell you. This is crazy! Oh, let me see. The fellow was brought in not long after midnight, if I remember correctly. They said he'd been shot by some criminal or other, so I opened him up like a shot. But the funny thing is, I went over his insides with a fine tooth comb and couldn't find the bullet anywhere. Yeah, it went through him. It, it was on the wall. Oh, uh, bullets going through people hadn't been invented yet. So oh. I'm afraid I had to throw up my hands and just stitch the fellow back up. So I'm afraid I had to throw up and stitch him closed with the bombs. 
He got shot in the stomach, so he lost some of his stomach acid, so I gave him some of mine. <laughs> I, I hate to state the obvious, but surely yeah. that's because the bullet is still at the scene of the shooting. The counsel for the defense is correct. Thank you as for doing this for me. <laughs> as is clearly shown in this photographic print, the bullet that the Skulkin brothers fired at Mr. Sholmes hit him in the stomach region. Oh, and this is me. His body. Then exited ah. his body and lodged into the shop wall where the calendar was hanging by the door. I think you'll find it's really quite simple if you'll consider the problem three-dimensionally. Three-dimensionally? Ah! Ah, what do you think I am, son? Uh, well, Jura number four is about the best I can do. As soon as I saw the wound to the man's stomach, I flipped him over like a flapjack. Like, yeah! Like a pancake? <laughs> Are you saying that you checked his back? Of course I did. And there wasn't a trace of injury. No sign that the bullet had left the body at all. What? That's the point. The only logical conclusion was that the bullet was still somewhere in the man's innards. Which is exactly what I said about slicing him up. I'm still none the wiser even now. How many times do I have to say it? Can somebody please explain how it happened? Can somebody please solve the mystery? It's almost as much of a mystery as how this jury was put together. Huh. Huh. So there might actually be a third bullet. Okay. Interesting. Oh, where's an expert when you need one? Uh, let's... Oh, the ballistics guy. Oh, we should probably, like... Do we need to, like, learn about... Or I, I think this is Russian on the person? nose enough. I'm willing to go yeah. for it. Ballistic expert. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> Beating a B -I -T -T. On the night in question, Mr. Sholmes was shot by one of the Skulkin brothers. But since there was no sign of an exit wound on his back, we must assume the bullet didn't pass through him. However, no bullet was found lodged in Mr. Sholmes' body either. Furthermore, a bullet was found lodged in the wall of the shop where Mr. Sholmes was shot. Juror number six. Hello, oh, he the line? There was a line? Check the dialogue. There was a funny line, apparently. What, what line? He's, check his dialogue again. He's, I, he's yeah. I I assume they meant we skipped uh, it by not talking to him. Please yeah, check. wait, wait. Go up, go up. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Those two statements clearly contradict the idea that all I do is pit jurors against each other. Uh oh. <laughs> Hello, my name is Villain. Pleased to meet you. <laughs> this apparent contradiction in the facts that is so clearly troubling juror number four. Are you able to explain the mystery? I have seen very similar situation in Motherland. It was night. There was blizzard. I was running away along mountain road in freezing cold. Golly! <laughs> Thanks. The snow was... <laughs> Thanks for that addition. The snow was piling high on both sides of road. It was very narrow and dangerous. My pursuers had hunting rifles, and they were on dog sleds. Mental note, don't ask too many questions. I was shot from behind, and I fell down in the snow. And the situation was very similar to what I hear today from doctor. They could not find charging that rad. <laughs> Pikachu. Uh, no sign of how do you say? Exit wound. Then then where did the bullet go? Bullet never hit me. Well, if it never hit you, why'd you fall down? Bullet hit frozen wall of ice very close to my side. What? <laughs> One small piece, very sharp, broke away from lump of ice and pierced my body. It made deep wound that looks just like bullet wound. Good gracious! Of course, piece of ice quickly melted inside me. And that is solution to mystery of disappearing bullets. You might think that a chunk of ice went in like Stop a bullet it. and melted, but that ain't it. <laughs> but, but that doesn't answer the question at all. Hmm? The shooting happened in a pawnbroker's shop. Not some snowy mountain road in another country! Just an idea. 
But we might not be looking at exactly the same scenario here. Rina, where exactly was Hurley short again? The brain. Um, well, oh, according to so much. <laughs> the report in his stomach. I ate the bullet! I consumed the bullet for its power! <coughs> uh, sort of around this area, I think? Well, <laughs> that's precisely where he always wears a little pouch on his belt. It's his primordial pouch. She's like a kitty cat. If you pet it, it will jiggle. A pouch? Actually, I might have noticed something like that. Yes, a pouch. It's where he keeps his three glass vials of very dangerous chemicals that he uses in his investigation. Oh, if those got in his body, I bet they didn't interact well with the anesthetics. <laughs> what? Uh... Really? That's why he couldn't be put to sleep. Yeah. Doctor, where is the pouch, Mr. Sh Mr. Sholmes? Where? Uh, well, the fellow had nothing like that on his person when he arrived at the hospital, as far as I remember. If I may. Lord Van Zeeks? While I realize it is forbidden for the prosecution to interject during a summation examination, I should inform the defense that I have the pouch in question in the antechamber outside the courtroom. Sorry? As I understand it, when the police arrived on the scene and found Mr. Sholmes injured, they removed the pouch in order to assess the wound. Oh, thank goodness. I thought I was getting forgetful for a moment. Since then, it has been in my safekeeping along with all other evidence relating to the case. I store it between the tartest of butt cheeks. Pray mm. forgive the discourtesy. <laughs> you just hear... I can't, I can't do the pops anymore. My nails are too long. If you can pull it from mine ass, thou will be my king like <laughs> Arthur. I was gonna Everyone, get out of the way! Get out of the way! <laughs> <laughs> Rhianus is sprinting over the table. I do, my <laughs> learned friend. <gasps> Pray forgive the discourtesy. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening in my courtroom? <laughs> Very well. Well, extremely unconventional during an exclamation <laughs> examination. <laughs> I must demand the prosecution present the item in question with all speed. Probably Bring you. forth the, the bag. Hmm, I see. So, this is the pouch worn by Mr. Sholmes the night in question, is it? If you bought that at a Ren Faire convention, it would cost like a hundred and twenty dollars. Yep. yep. Yeah. Look at that. One of the files is broken, and the leather around it is scorched black. It's almost as if the file exploded. Exploded? So, that night, the bullet from the Skulkin Brothers' gun struck Mr. Sholmes' pouch. And it was the glass file exploding that caused the fella's injury. This bullet did not penetrate the victim, but was deflected into Wallace's shop. That's a lot of wasted time. A delightfully complex aroma. Well, it would appear one mystery has been solved at least. <laughs> That's true. No, it has no bearing on the truth of this case. The bungling and burgling brothers shot the detective, and the accused shot the pawnbroker. The pertinent facts of the case remain unaltered. Uh. But at least the mystery is solved. I can sleep easy tonight. Thank you, young man. Da, ah, thank you very much. Glad I could help. Due to its bearing on the conundrum just solved, the court will sequester the scruffy pouch as evidence. Hey, these pouches in scruffy! Oh. <laughs> My pronouns are bungling and burgling. <laughs> oh, Rina, look. oh, can this we. Is yeah, can we do this? Great. Disc blood. Disc Tough blood. Enough. Oh, it didn't... Oh, it's green. Oh, okay, so it's, it's Sherlock's. Oh, a lovely bright shade of green. The first time we've seen it. Okay. Oh. In case I need to check this again. I wonder if the twist is going to be... Because it's basically blood types. It's not necessarily a DNA match. So maybe none of mm. that is Herlock's, actually. 
Maybe the is blood in the vial bullet? was somebody else's. Yeah, no, what if what if that's literally a vial of someone else's blood? Yeah, oh, look yeah. at that shit. With three bullets fired. Bruh, 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 bruh. Okay. Uh, I'm just gonna check if there's anything. Nope. All right. Check if there's anything else while I'm here. There's a hole here at the back. Ah, okay. Yeah, this is where he, the thing exploded and shrapnel got him. God, that sucks. It's amazing that that like burst but didn't break the other files. Mm-hmm. Poor dumbass. Okay. Um, not seeing anything. I mean, there's a dent in it, but yeah, I doubt I yeah. think so. All right. Okay. Back, please. Back, please. Uh. Door stuck. I, Door I, stuck. I, okay. I don't know what that was about. Uh, please, my lord, a little bit more time. After all, this is a new piece of evidence. It could be a valuable clue. Can't look anything away. Turn this around. All right, so, uh... Nope, wrong. Okay. Pre oh, I guess I need to press. I forgot there's no present in this mode. Number of bullets it has you convinced. Yes. I'm just going to move along a little bit. So as it shows, stuff goes missing, blah, blah, blah. So I suppose if there was another bullet. Could that be possible? Yeah, I can prove it! What? <laughs> <coughs> I assume you just show the bullet itself. Yeah, okay. Here it is. We discovered it just now. Yes. On the night in question at Winterbrink's Pawn Brokery, another bullet was fired. Hold it. What is this new trickery, the conjurer? <laughs> I, please, Venzix, I want to like you. You gotta cool it. Where did you find that bullet? Like, it's not, it's not the worst. Like, you Nipponese, it's basically just saying you're like you German sorcerer. Like it's awkward, but you couldn't throw someone behind bars for it. <laughs> yeah, it's it just was like ugh. it was lodged inside Mr. Sholmes's pouch. <laughs> What? <laughs> this pouch was removed from around Mr. Sholmes' waist before he was taken to hospital. And since then, it's been touched by no one, I assume. Do, do you mean to say the shot fired by the Skogan brothers that night? Yes. As your lordship has surmised, it hit this pouch. But that makes no sense whatsoever. We already know the whereabouts of the bullet fired at Mr. Sholmes. It's clearly visible in the photographic print. Ah! Two guns from the scene have already been submitted into the court record as evidence. Yes, that of Mr. Winderbank and that belonging to the Skulkin brothers. And the examination of both guns revealed that only a single bullet had been fired from each. But, but that must mean... That's right. We now know that on the night in question, three bullets were fired. However... There's another gun! Only two bullets were fired from the guns recovered from the crime scene. We cannot and must not pass judgment. Ugh. Ooh, my shoulder. <laughs> order! 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 While this summation examination remains incomplete, the court has been presented with new facts. Garland, someone saying it's the same as calling the Romani a G word. Uh, no, it isn't. No. Oh. Not even, no, not even not. remotely. Nippon is literally the Japanese word for Japan. <laughs> Objection. <laughs> yeah. Facts that would appear to shake the very foundations upon which the case against the defendant has been built. Mm. As is my prerogative in this situation, I hereby temporarily suspend the summation examination. By Jupiter! Bailiff, bring the witnesses back to the stand at once. Well, that was nice of it just to move on. 
why is it Nipponese, but we also say Japan? Nippon is their word for Japan. Japan is it, our it, word it, for Japan. It <laughs> was a weird translation sort of carryover. I can't remember if it was uh, from Spain or Portugal or something, but some sort of one, of one of those sort of countries, when one of their people went over to Japan, it was like a mistranslation of how they tried to pronounce Nippon, and then they got it brought over. And it, yeah. it messed it all up. Hubbub's right. It's more like calling a German uh, Dutch or, or Deutsch. D Deutsch, yeah, those are also different yeah, yeah. things. <laughs> Someone yeah. to chat, I'm a fucking Romani, and that is not the same thing. That's cool. <laughs> Witnesses? Governor John Lennon! <laughs> <laughs> were you listening to the proceedings while the defense carried out the summation examination? Uh, we was, Governor. We was. Perhaps we can dispense with the tedious preamble. Simply answer this one question. The third bullet has been identified at Scene of the crime. What do you make of that? Mike of it, Gov. I don't make nothing of it. Is it one of yours? God blimey, Gov. God <laughs> blimey, not a chance. In that case, did you have an accomplice? What? Uh, what? Never. The Skulking Brothers work alone unless there's three of you. Yeah, it's just the two of us, that's our trademark. <laughs> How soon we forget Paul Sulky. <laughs> we gotta get John Lemon. Only two of the bullets John from the crime Lemon. scene originated from the firearms we have in evidence. The third bullet was fired from another gun. Where is it? Is his name literally Lummy? Lummy, that's a hate scratcher. I think that's just... The guy's British. name literally Lummy. I don't think so. I don't so. think so. Counsel for the defense? Uh, yes? I should like to hear your thoughts regarding these new developments. What's lemon in Japanese? Great news, it's Raymond. <laughs> the third bullet and the mysterious missing firearm from whence it came. Thinking back over all the testimony we've heard and all the evidence we've seen, I think I'm starting to form a picture. A picture of what really happened that night. I actually don't think it has anything to do with them, to be honest. I think during that eggs? I think during that 30 minute gap in time there was another person. Mm -hmm. And that's gonna tie into the second half of this case. I think mm -hmm. it's clear what this third bullet tells us. But um they had a secret accomplice. I don't think so. Cause they're they're like literally not even smart enough to have not mentioned that already. And I feel like Ringo would have let it slip. That's the third. Third, bro. Save. They did? Okay. It, it, it is that they had a third brother? Alright. Save, by the way. Oops. On that night at Winderbank's pawnbrokery, the brothers must have been working with a third man. Um. Third skulk in his desk. Oh, away. okay. I thought you guys meant that, like, his third... The person that they were afraid of, like, you know divulging information about was like who they were working for but i guess they could work for their brother or something okay the witnesses are clearly doing their best to cover up the existence of this accomplished but uh, there's another person objection objection oh it's still a little bit more in here thank goodness an accomplice you say pig swill these protracted proceedings have already forced us to endure two submission examinations. Yet at all that time, there has been not a murmur of a third man, if this apparently wraith-like being exists. The cord must be shown hard evidence. Without it, the fancy will be crushed. Shit! Firstly, proof, evidence, that this accomplice was ever at the scene of the crime. And secondly, the identity of this spurious character. The Skulkins are lying. I know that. But how can I ascertain the identity of the person they're hiding? Well, Counsel? I'm supposed to prove the existence of this accomplice and reveal the person's identity, even. I... I don't think we can do this. I'm... I'm gonna say no. I don't think we can do both of those things. You can? Okay. Alright. Why do they even ask that? 
for tension. All right, let me, uh... Oh. Oh, no, we, we have... Hmm. Okay. Sure, I can do it. I believe I can provide all the answers the prosecution demanded. So, my Nipponese friend, despite the swimming eyes, you seem to think you have something to say. This promises to be interesting. I have to push forward now. There's no other option. I need to use every single piece of evidence available to me if it will make a difference. In that case, counsel, I would ask that you present the evidence without delay. On the night in question, in the moments leading up to the death of the victim, what proof have you that there was a third intruder present at the scene? I think it's the blood. Because, uh, yeah, it's the blood. Because it's not Herlock. Yeah. I oh, mean... you know what? Remember when, yeah, no, because remember when fucking, um, he pulled the disc away from Gina and he scratched his finger on it. Oh, you're right. you're right. Good, good memory. The evidence is right here in this portfolio. By Jove! That portfolio again, is it? It's purple green! <laughs> <laughs> Do you expect the court to rifle through your papers itself? Be more specific! Yeah. You claim one of those blood samples proves the. It, it, it does prove it. Right? I mean, it could look, be look, either, green. either it's of the green a, it's ones. It's from an Aryan white guy. Uh, I think it's got to be this one, because this specifically proves who it is. But uh, this this suggests an intruder was present. Yeah. Take that. Yep. What am I looking at? Yeah, green. Uh, it's blood. Remember. Blood stain. Um, blood stain? Let green. me just... Green Delicious. blood. Okay. Mm. Something developed by Mr. Herlock Sherman's by the great detective. New invention! Stop! Not yet appeared in stories! Stop! It's this, you see. It doesn't have a name yet, though. This fogger sprays a chemical that reacts with the different elements in people's blood to change its color. You fogger! You fogger! <laughs> different elements in people's blood? blood is slightly different, you see, because it's made up of different elements. This, what is it again? Phlegmatic, uh... <laughs> all I can't remember all I blood is gone. sanguine. Nice try. Oh. No! No! So, by seeing what color it changes to, you can tell in a flash whose blood it is. Uh, Iris, all blood is sanguine by nature. Not mine. I'm only made of black bile. Blah. <laughs> Oh, that brings a whole extra dimension to looking at blood. Talk of blood in courtroom. Stop. Very exciting. Stop. As an example, this one shows the blood of the victim, Mr. Winterbank. Ah, a striking blue. Oh, what a lovely color. Yes, so you'll see the green color of this blood stain on the calendar shows that somebody else was shot in the main part of the shop. Now hold fire there, young man. Could be from some unrelated incident, couldn't it? No. Ob so obviously no. No, it's what? not unrelated. No. The date showing on the calendar is the date in which Mr. Winterbank was killed. By golly! Therefore, we can assume that whoever was shot was shot on the same day. And whose blood is it? I love this comment in chat. Iris sprays Benzie's chalice with the color spray. It changes color. Everyone looks. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the Skulkin brothers in the stand don't appear to be suffering from any gunshot injuries, which means the blood, it must be the blood of somebody else. Objection. The third intruder, in fact. Objection. Whose identity the courtroom is still waiting to hear? You can't delay this any longer, my learned friend. Who is this alleged third intruder? Be cute, man. The man's name is Egbert Benedict. <laughs> Egbert Benedict? Who on earth are you talking about, Council? He oh, paid... that name was quite made up. <laughs> His... He paid a visit to Winderbank's pawnbrokery on the afternoon before the incident took place. When the accused attempted to deceive the pawnbroker into releasing this article into a possession. That's right. Hmm? The man identified by the defense, Mr. Eggert Benedict, then attempted to take the article from the defendant by force. Oh, 
This was you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, sir. We're making noises. I believe this filthy pocket thief has just redeemed an article from you. No? Uh, yes, yes, sir. The article in question belongs to me. I demand for it to be returned at once. Now that's a lie. What are you trying to pull? Give me back my overcoat, you wastrel. And needless to say... Oh! Any music he's, box discs too? He's doing the moves that the brothers are oh doing! God, oh, he wow. is! Oh, that's outstanding! Well done, game! Inspector Gregson was there at the time and can attest to what happened. In the end, it was the inspector himself who took the disc. <laughs> disc. Can you corroborate this account, Inspector? Um, yes, my lord. Uh, that's more or less what happened. And in the interest of being thorough, I asked Winterbank for a prince showing the fellow. Taken from one of his red-handed recorder gubby, gubbinsies. Gubbinsies. <laughs> yes, that's him talking to Mr. Winterbank that morning. And you claim this man is the brother's accomplice? Well, well, Mr. and Mr. Skulkin. <laughs> Never seen the geese. Oh, no, wrong. John Lennon, never seen the geese before in my life. <coughs> John Lennon, all my life, gone for my life, never seen him. Well, somewhat unsurprisingly, it appears our witnesses disagree with, Brasser, uh, with your assertion. I'm sure your lordship recalls my learned Nipponese friend's actual assertion, which was that he could prove the identity of the alleged accomplice. Yes, and I can. Then show us the evidence! <laughs> uh, Kuri, we must see proof that the clean-cut gentleman in the photograph is the filthy criminal that you... Something I didn't catch the end Say he is. This is the last piece of evidence. I've had a feeling that something has been missing in this trial from the very start. But now I'm going to drag it kicking and screaming into the courtroom. Are you ready to present your answer to the court then, counsel? Yes, my lord. The defense will present the evidence now. Proof that the man in the picture... Oh, okay. Yep, uh, it's the disc. I guess I should probably... Yeah, the, the blood turned green when analyzed. That's that's a good enough indicator. It's the disc. This game's been good about letting you present any piece of evidence so long as it shows the correct thing in it. As I mentioned before, on the afternoon of the day in question, the defendant attempted, deceitfully, admittedly, to reclaim this disc from Winderbanks. Which is when the aforementioned... Eggert Benedict appeared on the scene, I believe. This man then attempted to purloin the, the article from the dependent's possession, no? That's correct, my lord. I myself was present at the time. It was following that this, uh, it was following that this, what? It was following this that a minor incident occurred. Yeah, there we go. We don't need to talk to this guy, all right. <laughs> Very well. Oh! Then I shall bid you farewell. Say goodbye to style. Wait a minute, that disc is mine. Oh! What, what do you think you're doing, you little tramp? You've you've drawn blood, you filthy animal! Ah! Being a music box disc, it has countless small but sharp metal protrusions over its surface. These protrusions called mi caused Mr. Benedict's finger to bleed. And the resulting smear of blood is still visible on that disc now. Goodness! A blood stain, is it? No, my bloody. My oh. assistant and I have just analyzed the blood stain here in this very courtroom. Bloody! Using my trusty fogger gun. Yes, and we added the results to this portfolio. Yeah, so they would have let me do both. Love that. Oh, I see! <laughs> Uh, that's it's exactly the same color as the blood around the calendar! The evidence is conclusive. The man calling himself Mr. Eggert Benedict, who was in Mr. Winterbanks earlier in the day, is the accomplice who was present at the scene of the crime that same night. Still someone else there. Look at this brother's name. Brother's <laughs> My lord, it is the opinion of the defense that Mr. Eggert Benedict should be summoned to the courtroom to testify. Hmm. It would certainly seem that we can ill afford to ignore this gentleman's apparent oh, presence. Objection! There can't this be has... a st more stylish man than me in the court. I, I refuse! This has gone on long enough. 
This flagrant ignorance of the mechanics of law. Herlock Sholmes, you say? Yes, I've heard the name. The protagonist in a series of short stories for the vulgar classes. A god of detection or some such. And now you employ chemical substances devised by this fantastical persona in the highest court in the land. Do you expect us to take you seriously? The samples made by this plaything are not fit to be called evidence. Hmm. So the blood stain turned a shade of green. What of it? Here's to you successfully proving that no other blood in the world would turn the same color. And pray, do not even think of suggesting that we should take Mr. Sholmes' word for it. <laughs> Is he right? There's a bullshit. I don't know. I mean, he's a great detective. I knew it would come to this. Of course, Mr. Sholmes' invention isn't going to be recognized by any official body. But what other choice did I have? Hmm. Just remembering what Father Christmas over there said before. <laughs> suspending the summation examination. Uh. In other words, the examination isn't over yet, is it? Good grief! What did you just say, young girl? And in the summation examination, the decision as to whether or not the trial continues is in the hands of the six jurors, isn't it? I love it whenever Ace Attorney, like, Shu Takumi really likes um, jury systems, I think. Because there's multiple times where it's just like some lawful evil character being like, this wouldn't fly and the, by the books of the law. And it's just like, that's fine. That's not what we're, that's not the metric we're using, Lamau. <laughs> so, the way I see it, it doesn't matter what certain other people think of Hurley's invention. At least, not for now. Yes. Because the common man loves him. She's right. Young lady, you have quite the devious mind. It really just comes down to one thing. Whether these ladies and gentlemen of the jury are convinced by what you say, Runa. Is that about right, would you say? Or did I misunderstand something? Unbelievable. Mr. Sholmes partner is a force to be reckoned with. Iris Wilson, sharpshooter. After that shrewd pr uh, Precis? process, I don't Precis? know. Uh, yes, that of the situation from an entirely unexpected source. It must be acknowledged that the previous summation examination has yet to reach its conclusion. This is absurd, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. <laughs> Iris is just sticking her tongue out at him. <laughs> the court now looks to you for your final leanings in this matter. <clears throat> As proud citizens of Her Majesty's Britain, I'm sure you will come to fair and just conclusions. Hmm. So then, say your final decisions in turn, please. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. 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 Oh. Not guilty. Oh, okay. Well, that's nice that we don't have to, like, convince half of them again. Two call guilty, and four call not guilty. Such is the outcome of the Objection. summation examination. Objection. My lord, <coughs> with all due respect, this voice is starting to hurt. Oh, no. The prosecution refuses to accept this decision. On what grounds? If these jurors are persuaded by some half-baked concoction devised by a pretender to real police work, then they are too ignorant to be trusted with the judgment of anyone's guilt. I'm sorry, Lord Van Zeeks, but the outcome of the summation examination cannot be ignored. This trial will continue. Oh, owie, my I have heart problems. Duty. Nevertheless, we find ourselves in a rather awkward situation. The defense has very reasonably requested the subpoena of a new witness. Sadly, I fear that will be impossible. Is he dead? What? The man, <laughs> oh. the, the name the gentleman gave for himself, Edgar Benedict, 
is quite clearly false. Really? I don't believe it. Just when I managed to prove the man was there that night. Well, that's not really on us to find him. Um, could could I say something? Who was that? Please. Um, it was me, my lord. That is my awful son, actually. Oh Number my god. Five. What have you to say, madam? If possible, Inspector? Uh, me, ma'am. I wonder if you might show the photographic print to me again. Oh, the no one in which way. the gentleman is shown. <laughs> uh, right, yes. Uh, this one, you mean, of Mr. Benedict. Yes. There's no doubt in my mind. Sure, number five. You don't mean to say you know this man? Yes, I know him. What? No. Good gracious! Order! 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 Juror number five, how on earth? I am a communications officer! Stop! As we can clearly see. The gentleman in the photograph is... Stop! Also a communications officer! Stop! What? He works in my office! She stop. has a crush on him! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a very talented operator, in fact. Stop! He should be in the communication station now! Stop! Tapping away at a telegraph! Stop! This doesn't seem right somehow. I can't put my finger on why, but it doesn't feel right. Hmm, well, I suppose we all imagined the accomplice would be some sort of hardened criminal, but no, it was the government! Who would have known? It's a bit unexpected to find out that he has a respectable job by day, whatever he gets up at night. Yes, I suppose that's it. Suppose that's why I felt something was wrong. If the gentleman is the London's communication station, we should be able to subpoena him within the hour. Lord Van Zeeks, if you please. I don't yes, want to. Yes, my Lord. Tommy Hurdy. <laughs> Make the arrangements. Make the necessary arrangements with all haste, as your lordship bids. The court will recess for one hour. When the new witness arrives, we shall reconvene to hear the gentleman's testimony. Inspector Gregson. Uh, yes, my lord. I should like to hear from you specifically about events at the pawnbrokery on the day in the question. Come to my chambers during the recess. Yes, sir, my lord. Very well. Court is adjourned until 1.40 p.m. This is a great case. All right, that's definitely our stopping point. Yep. Oh, oh man. Boy. God, this is so f much better. You didn't like Quercus Alba? I didn't ah! even get to see him. I left that case like in hour four, so I didn't see him. <laughs> Whoops. All right. Uh, well, chat, for people who have played this game, would it be reasonable to think we could wrap this up next time? Yay or nay? Yes, yeah, yes, people say. Okay. Okay. Maybe, yes. This if really will while, be the final it's testimony. It's, I'm not seeing a single no. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, cool. I think two times someone says. Because the thing to keep in mind, chat, is that we're reading it out loud. That's so that takes longer. So by like by default. All right. It's two more parts. It's another two hours, maybe. Really? Okay. That seems really? a little shorter than I would have yeah, expected. Yeah. I guess this game is kind of, I, I have heard just loops into the next game, so. All right, I'm gonna throw you at Piff. Say hello Let's to go Piff. Go get Piff, Piff's playing Hades. Don't spoil oh, anything yeah. for him. Yeah, please do not spoil uh, Hades for him. All right, uh, off, I, off I go then.